I'm not reading. I'm just looking at the picture. Welcome to the Cold Hard Truth on Sports. Welcome, everyone, to another great week here of the Cold Hard Truth on Sports. I am your host, Matthew Long. You can get me on social media at Matt Long Sports. You can find the show and the site at the CHT on Sports anywhere on social media. Uh, the website, of course, being the CHT on Sports.com. Great show here tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, those of you who tuned into the live show, that you can listen live, right? You, you, if you haven't got that picture yet, via the free Spreaker app, just go to your Play Store or, or your uh, App Store, whatever it may be, uh, download Spreaker. That's S P R E A K E R little gold star that's it that's what you get you 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 get it you download it and just like uh my kids you get a little gold star for it yeah it'll be an app with a gold star it's a spreaker on it you listen to the show entirely entirely live through the spreaker app so be sure to follow the show over on spreaker all right follow the show over on spreaker Thank you for those of you who uh, last, what is it, we had uh, six years, last six years, been following us over on um, on Blog Talk Radio, appreciate it. Um, fortunately, you guys only get the show for two hours, all right, and then, uh, and then the last hour of overtime, we will do again tonight over on Facebook Live. We're livening it up on Facebook again this week. So, a lot to get into. A lot of games this past weekend. the first full week um, of college football. This is where, you know, for, for college football fans and for sports fans, you know, it's where the rubber meets the road. Um, all the hype that we've had before the season, all those preseason polls, what did they tell us? Were they right? Were they wrong? What did we have to learn from them? And let me tell you, we see what we see on the field. And it it just goes to show you even more so why these preseason polls are just to get fans riled up. Just to get fans going. I'm telling you, you can't you can't put weight in them too much. All right. So, uh, big weekend of college football. I will go over uh, where we're at for the, the updated rankings for college football. Top 25 for the Associated Press and Coaches Pool. I'll just go over the top 25 for the AP. Is that fair? I put more weight into the Associated Press and the Coaches Pool. Um. I've talked to coaches, and they literally are just, a lot of times, placing a blind ballot. So outside of their own conference and their own interests, they don't watch a ton of football. They can't. They don't have time. So I I really don't put a whole lot of weight on the coach's pull. It's nice. Do they uh, still take the time to do a poll? Although I'm pretty sure there are many coaches would care less to do it. Um, anyways. But I'll talk about the Associated Press after the first full week. It's actually week two. The week two poll. So, 
and then we get into the NFL. That was the perfect time to play it. I don't know why you didn't play it. You got to get better at those sound drops, man. Anyways. <laughs> um, week one of the NFL is coming up on us quick. It is Thursday night. We're two days away from uh, the opening game for uh, the NFL. Uh, on Thursday night, which is, is going to be just, I think it's going to be a spectacular game. Falcons in Philadelphia. Uh, I look for, again, by the way, Nick Foles is going to be the starter in that game, which shouldn't be a surprise. I know many people, hey, I can't believe Wentz didn't get the start. Does that mean they don't have confidence in Wentz? Don't they don't they have confidence in wins anymore? I don't know. I am just so worried. I, uh, no. You know what that means? That means Nick Foles is going in because he's the backup. And they still need to use their backup. Carson Wentz has not been medically cleared to take contact. Right? So if 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 your if your guy hasn't been medically cleared to take contact in a contact sport, uh, he's he's clearly not going to be the starter. It's pretty pretty straightforward stuff here. <laughs> People are getting bent out of shape. Does this mean this is no? It doesn't doesn't mean they're losing any sort of faith in Carson Wentz. It's just that he's not ready yet uh, medically. Not ready yet. Uh, he's looked good throwing the ball and you know moving around in practice. He just his his uh, injury hasn't healed to the point where the medical staff are confident that he is medically cleared to take hits on it anywhere else, but more specifically on that injury. Once it happens, then uh, it'll be good. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this game. Uh, Philly has a schedule to where, you know, Foles can really lead them into the season and they can kind of swap roles and wins take it off from there. I mean, they could repeat. Realistic. I mean, they start out with the Falcons, which will be a good game. I think it will be a tremendous game. Then they go to Tampa. I have a lot of questions when it comes to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll get m more into them when I get into my picks for, uh, for the first week. But th there's just... A lot of questions there. You know, it seems like they've put some answers in place, but but there's a lot of questions I have. Um, I, I don't I don't have confidence that they they're a playoff team this year. Sorry, Bucks fans. Sorry, Tampa Bay. I I don't I don't know. I had I, I just uh, as of right now, as of right now, before they've played any football, any meaningful football, I can't say that I have confidence that the Buccaneers are a playoff team. And. Uh, and they picked up, they signed uh, Carl Nassip to bring in another defensive end. All right. They, uh, in the offseason, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, they picked up. 
so there is a lot of questions with the defensive line and how, how are they going to build the depth? Who are, uh, who are going to be their guys? Now, there's been you – know, I'm just going to get to it now. I'm just going to – I know this is Thursday night football. I just – you sure? We'll, we'll do that. Okay. I'm eyeing the clock. I want to get into this. My producer's telling me to save this. Okay. Um, so I got more on the bucks when I do – when I break down the picks for the week in the, in the second hour of the show. I could just move that to the opening rant. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm giddy for it. Not, not necessarily in a good way, but it's something that needs... Yeah. So, anyways. Back to the Eagles. Like I said, the Eagles are very doable. They have the Buccaneers at home. Uh, they go to Tampa Bay. It's a warm game, uh, so it's it's a winnable game. Then they they go back home to Philly, have the Colts, Andrew Luck. Yeah, what does he have there? Um, some of their new weapons on offense we haven't really seen do much, too much. That's uh, exciting in this preseason. So I want to see where the Colts go. Um, they're probably want to. Another one of those big question marks as far as NFL teams, for me at least. Uh, then they go to Tennessee. Uh, they're in Nashville. They, uh, that'll be a tough game against the Titans. Then they, got the, then they go uh, back home. They got Minnesota at home. They, got the, they travel to uh, New Jersey to play the Giants. They're back home with the Panthers. They come back to Florida to Jacksonville, and this is October 28th, a couple days before Halloween, to play the Jags. Back home against the Cowboys, then to New Orleans to play the Saints. Um, back home to play the Giants. At home again to play the Redskins. Then they go on a, an away streak to Dallas. Then L.A. uh, LA to play the Rams, back home to take on the Texans, and then the last game of the year is on the road in D.C. It's not that far away, but on the road in D.C. to play the Washington Redskins to to, um, to seal their season. Um. The Giants aren't going to be as easy to beat this year. They have more weapons. Um, and they're, they can spread you out more. And I'm going to get a little bit more into the Giants when I get into the pick segment too. Um, but on the other side of this, looking at, uh, looking at the Falcons... You know, uh, it, it, it's uh, they again. They got the the NFC East, but they also drew um, the AFC North, and uh, they got the Steelers on the road. They got the Bengals at home. Uh, the Browns in Cleveland. Again, that's middle of the season. That's November 11th. Uh, they do have the Ravens at home and the Cowboys at home. But go on the road to Green Bay. So, uh, it, 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 it could be a really topsy-turvy type of season. Because... Again, the Giants are at home, and they usually excel more at home, and I think they'll need that. But I, the, the Giants, I think, are going to pleasantly surprise some people. I, I think uh, Steelers, again, they're they're a playoff team. 
Le'Veon Bell, from what I'm told, Le'Veon Bell will be there this week. Right? Um, and just, and I'm going to hit something on that. Um, as far as the Le'Veon Bell situation, just so we get an update on that. He, he, he is, the holdout portion is, is pretty much, there's really no more holdout left. Um, he's, he just hasn't signed his, his tender, which just is stopping him from getting paid. Like he can't, like because that deadline passed in mid July, because of the way the league rules work. They can't negotiate any more contract right now until he signs his tender. So, and if he doesn't sign his tender, I mean, I think it's like 800 and some thousand dollars per game he's going to miss. He's just going to lose by not signing it. Right? So he, he's not... He's not in a situation, just so people understand, he's not in a in a holdout situation where he's he's not coming to until he gets paid. Because they can't they can't agree to anything right now per league rules. He has to sign his tender. And once he's signed his tender, because he's been franchise tagged, and they passed the deadline of mid July, then they can start again and move forward again. But until then, they cannot discuss it. So he either shows up, gets paid, and plays, or he doesn't show up, he doesn't get paid, and he does not play. Now, that's similar to what he did last year, but he showed up with nine days to go. This is, uh, right now, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so five days. So from what I understand, tomorrow or Thursday, he'll be there. Um, there isn't a, like a deadline that I'm aware of to where he would have to show up and have signed by in order to play on Sunday. There's not like a, a deadline day. Uh, like if you're not – like in college football where – you know, if you're not present on the team or in act, team activities by this deadline, then you can't play for uh, at the first part of the season. Or if you're not enrolled, you know, it's not sort of that sort of thing. He's part of the team. The coaches, the front offense is clearly have him as one of the 53. But in order for him to be able to play, he has to have signed his tender. And he has to have agreed to um, to uh, to the franchise tag. So, if they want to go forward, he has to sign. Whether he then decides not to play or not, then that's up to him. Uh, but I think really, uh, I think really the basis. Of what um, I think, really, the basis of what he is going for here isn't necessarily. Um, this isn't necessarily him trying to like make necessarily more money for himself. Um, rather, um, trying to make a point and trying to hit home that. Players need to get paid and that he is valuable and he should be treated as such. And uh, kind of what he's doing here will set it up for others in the future. We had a little bit of a technical issue there for people over on, uh, on Blog Talk Radio, but we're back up and going over there as well so um all right let me 
go over here to the message board. Uh, yes, I will. Yes, absolutely. I will get into Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack trade. All right. And again, the number to call in is 347-237-5539. Um, but yeah, this this Thursday night game, I'm really looking forward to it. It's uh, two, two teams that are at the tops of their divisions, two playoff teams. Um, two teams, especially with with uh, the Falcons making some uh, additions or upgrades, if you want to call it, uh, there at the the wide receiving position with rookie, rookie Calvin Ridley. Still have Mohamed Sanu and Julio Jones as your as a receiving core. Um, Devonta Freeman's there, and Tevin Coleman. I mean, the skilled positions for for uh, Matt Ryan to dish the ball off to is is just insane, to say the very least. Uh, the defense is, has looked pretty admirable as well. Vic Beasley is a, is a beast. Uh, Deion Jones, I think we're looking uh looking for a lot from as well Desmond Trufant at uh at the cornerback position is making uh is making a lot of headwind and uh Robert Alfred another guy that they're uh they're happy with along with Brian Poole so i mean they have some really skilled cornerbacks there and that's not even saying uh Kenny O'Neal safety he's 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 played big so uh, they're 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 pretty loaded on both sides of the ball and then having Alex Mack there at center bringing him in um just just beefs up that offensive line that I think at times was a bit porous at uh, last season. So uh, I look forward to see a little bit more protection there. That's the thing is when you get – when you have your, your receivers that can play out and, and and a wide receiver in the slot that opens up those quicker passes, when you have – uh, a tight end that has hands uh, is reliable. He opens up more too. And then on top of that, when your running backs can also either put it between the tackles or hit the edge with it, you know the sky is the limit, really, with this uh, with this with this team. So I uh, I'm really looking forward to see how can. Uh, can this Atlanta Falcons team step up in a big way and really show um, everything that, that the Falcons fans have been looking for? So, hey, I, do they win? Now, I'm, not giving, I'm not giving conference predictions. I'll give game predictions. So, but that's the first game on Thursday, Thursday night on, uh, where are they playing that game at? Let me get, bring that back up here. Um, I think this is one of the games that you, they'll be on, uh, NBC. Yeah. So it'll be on NBC and NFL network. This game, I know there is a bundle of games that were bought by Amazon. 
Um, who else? Amazon bid it on. Facebook bid it on as well. On rights. And, you know, that's the thing is like when you start getting these uh, these media companies like Facebook and, and Amazon into it because they're they're trying to really bring it in on the creative side, um, buying rights up for something like the NFL. It, and they can they have so much more money to spend and bid on it. It's uh, it, it'll be tough for for regular television to uh, for regular networks to really compete on some levels. Um, so we're I mean we're waiting to see. It's going to be really interesting because Disney their offer was essentially accepted by 20th Century Fox to bring in those assets. So just to kind of recap, they would be bringing in all the local Fox assets, Fox Sports, all the local Fox Sports assets they would be bringing in. They would also get Sky Sports. They would be the the majority owner in Hulu as well, including all the uh, all the 21st century content for uh, – and the Fox television content for um, their TV shows and 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 whatnot, uh, all that assets they own, uh, the movies they own. So it 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 almost is to a point that if your kids watch a movie, Disney would own the rights to it. And if you watch sports in the United States that's not on Fox, then, um, or NBC, which is owned by Comcast, it, uh, Disney would own rights to it or have bought rights to it. it it's, it's crazy. It's a crazy thing to reach. Um, and they should be okay with this because it's just moving content over. So just so you realize. So I'm not a big fan of the ESPN Plus. It gives you, it unlocks. So, so essentially you pay for ESPN every month. I think it's like, it doesn't matter if you're streaming. It doesn't matter if you're uh have a cable package. You're you're looking at like ten to twelve dollars a month of that is going to um is is going to ESPN already. And then you're throwing in another what ten bucks is it something like that? Ten bucks for ESPN plus. So you're you're looking at paying essentially uh, twenty, twenty, twenty-two dollars a month just for ESPN. Because when you get ESPN Plus, it just unlocks additional channels. You don't get ESPN one, two, three. Uh, you're, you're not getting those normal stations, the regular, just those stations, as you're seeing on cable television. No, no, no. You would have to buy a separately though. So if you just have ESPN Plus, that means you just have the. I mean, I could pull up what's on ESPN Plus. Uh, you just and get, give me the schedule card. Um, you just get. Additional channels. So, the ESPN Plus, right now, they have some live baseball. Okay, so this weekend, you would get uh, college soccer from Marquette. Oh, that's on now. Marquette and St. Louis. You could watch that. 
An extra 10 bucks a month will get you that game. Um, it will also get you, uh, let's see here, volleyball. You can watch Tennessee play Tennessee State in women's volleyball. Uh, the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, that is on MLB TV and ESPN Plus and MLB Channel. So you're not getting anything special there, but you, you can also see that there. Uh, Court 17 of the U.S. Open uh, it will be on ESPN Plus. So uh, otherwise you would not be able to see Court 17. Is that, is that how it works? Let's get, uh, oh, here we go. There's a show called Ariel and the Bad Guy. You can't miss that. ESPN FC, it's a soccer show, world football. Uh, they have a fantasy show. It's called The Fantasy Show that you can get on ESPN+. Plus. You can watch Series A. More soccer. So this is kind of basically for if you don't live in the United States. I don't know. That's what I kind of feel. That's kind of the feel I'm getting from it here. That's not what it is. Oh, look. Look. There's original content. Um, the, the Four Falls of Buffalo. You can see... So those are the 30 for 30 spotlights. You can see all of those on ESPN+. Plus. Pretty sure you can just see that on ESPN On Demand. Um, La Lacrosse Weekly is also available. And League of Legends Championship. What is that? I don't know. Let me tell you. I am excited about it. I'm not. No, I'm not. Um, yeah, I, th I think ESPN Plus is a waste of money. Personally. Now, you can try it for oh, only $4.99 a month. So you're paying $12 a month now. $12 of whatever you pay per month to whoever you... Hulu or Xfinity or... Uh, Direct TV now or uh, Sling or whoever it is, twelve bucks of that goes to ESPN. That's their fee for their content. Twelve bucks. Now you can pay an additional five dollars. You could just donate them the five dollars to watch a bunch of stuff that I don't think are really getting ratings, and because they're not getting ratings. They're not really selling ads. Because they're not selling ads, they need your five dollars a month. That's what I that's what I've been pulling here from ESPN Plus. I know a ton of people that signed up for ESPN Plus to watch the Bud Crawford fight, watch him win a uh, welterweight title, and then go ahead and cancel the next day. Yeah. So they uh I don't know, I, I feel like this is a huge waste of money. I would you'd have to be doing something pretty drastic to get me to pay them five dollars a month. I don't see any content here that's worth paying five dollars a month for. I don't know. Let me go to the phone lines. Bring in it looks like uh we have James. You there, James? Yo, what's going on? Is the editor for our, the boxing segment on the Cold Heart Truth and Sports, and the host for the Boxing Source Radio Show, I'm one of our top college football contributors. How are you doing today, James? You good? Are you are you uh, are you are you talking through a, like a, a voice changer? Or is that uh, or is that the cell service? No, nah, it's just through the it, it's it's the headphones that I got on. Oh, okay. I'm gonna say talking in a bottle is always fun. 
We got somebody else here too. I don't so what's going on? Uh, I was just breaking down, finishing up the intro for for the show. Uh, however, uh, I was like I said, I was looking forward to uh, to the Eagles and Falcons, the first game two days away for the NFL. Opening up for the NFL, and uh, it should be it should be a pretty impactful game. You know, the Eagles are a little thin at running back, but uh, we'll, you know they're defending champions. Let's uh, let's see if they can go out and with uh, Nick Foles and do what they did at the end of last season. And by the way, let me. They did change. They did make some things. Nick Foles was not good running the offense Carson Wentz ran. So they moved more to RPO. And a lot of that RPO wasn't centered on Nick Foles. It was centered on Jay Ajayi, who will not be playing on Thursday. So it may look a little bit different. Um... Jeffries is a question as well. So what kind of weapons we're going to be looking at for the Eagles in game one against the Falcons, I don't know. Uh, I would actually, I'll go out on a limb and say I picked the Falcons to win this game. Maybe not by much, but they're good at home. Uh, I give them a touchdown. Are you gonna? Will you be in Atlanta on Thursday? Or are you back in the DMV? No, man. You be in the no. DMV. You in the DMV? Yeah, back in the DMV, man. Yeah, may uh, you know, just try to catch the game on TV, I guess. Yeah, I'll be good. It, it's on. Uh, it's on NBC, so. Pretty much everybody can watch it yeah. in the NFL Network. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think the Eagles, the Eagles are pretty thin at quarterback too, man. Because uh, was it um, Wednesday? Uh, Wednesday ain't really back from his uh, knee injury yet. Yeah, he hasn't been medically cleared to play, so he's a he's a no go for sure, a no go right now. Because they they want to get they'd want to get him some some live snaps in practice before they put him out in the game. Uh, I mean he he's been he's been thrown around in practice, but it's 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 not the same because he can't take hits. So certain parts of practice he can't compete in. It makes a difference. So we can't really do contact right now. Yeah, he can't. He can't take contact right now. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, they do have Darren Sproles back. So even though they don't have JJ, they do have Darren Sproles back. Uh, a young thirty-five-year-old Darren Darren Sproles, but still, it's Darren Sproles. You know. It, I'd like to see where uh, uh, what he can do after being out a whole season, mm-hmm. and they still have Zach Ertz. So, and, and you know they added Mike Wallace as well to the receiving core. I, we'll see if 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 he really helps out or not. Um, some of his best days might be behind him. So, but the defense will be good. I think we're pretty certain of that. Still have Chris Long. They still have. Uh, they added Michael Bennett, and he he looked good in the preseason. Um, they still have Fletcher Cox. He's 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 good to go, and uh, it, uh, it it'll be it'll be fun to watch. Cause he just he, Atlanta added some weapons. like adding. Adding Calvin Ridley 
I think was such a makes such a big difference because they still have Sanu, and now they can move Sanu down to the slot or they can go double high and stack them up. You know, they can do so much more with guys that they could probably rely a bit more on when it comes to passing. So, you're, you you know, you're not going to be able just to roll out necessary, necessarily two corners and a nickel may not get it done, you know. So you might have to roll out three corners and, and that kind of changes up the dynamic. If you're rolling out more corners and you don't have a quality nickel to play in that situation, now you're you're probably going to be targeted in the run game as well. So it, it it makes it makes the defense smaller. But it'll be fun. It's going to be fun to watch. So but um I want to change gears up here and I wanted to get into college football. We have a top 25, a new top 25, uh, and I'm going to go down the list here pretty quickly. Uh, send it number one, of course, Alabama. Number two, Clemson, Georgia, Ohio State at four. Five, Wisconsin, Oklahoma at six. Auburn, seven. Notre Dame at eight. Washington, after taking a loss this weekend to Auburn, uh, this past weekend, they fall down to nine. Uh, Stanford at ten. LSU after impressively winning this weekend, move up to eleven. Virginia Tech after impressively winning this weekend, move up to number twelve, eight spots. LSU moved up fourteen spots. Um, and I'll. I'm going to address that here in a minute. Uh, Penn State's in the 13. West Virginia at 14. Michigan State, after almost losing, moved down four spots to 15. TCU holds tight at 16. Uh, SoCal is at 17. Mississippi State stays at 18. Uh, University of Central Florida may be the best team in Florida. At 19, they definitely have the best quarterback in Florida, uh, Mackenzie Milton. Boise State, the best team in Bo- Boise State at 20, Michigan uh, after getting drummed drops 14 spots. Down to 21, Miami after getting railroaded moves down to 22. Oregon after a victory moves up. South Carolina. Uh, moves into the top 25, and so does the Gators after uh, previously not being ranked, and that's your Associated Press top 25. Um, the couple the couple games, a couple teams that really, I think, stood out, some of the things that stood out to me most, number one being Virginia Tech. Uh, we saw glimpses of it last year, and then they just really sharded all over themselves in Miami and just made everyone question. And then at the beginning of the game yesterday, it seemed like um, it seemed like as typically um, – as as typically they do taking leads and then you know regurgitating them back up it, we almost seen FSU get back into it and the officials missed a couple calls Willie missed several calls and for the most part the offensive line seemed to be non-existent for the entire game could not establish a run game. Um, everything looked like a mess. 
looked unorganized. They looked confused. They looked lost. I know it is the first game in a completely different system. They go from a pro-style system to more of a spread-type system, uh, more of an RPO system. Um, but they just couldn't get the run game established. Uh, anchors who looked like one of the best backs in college football last year. I, I, I can't say for certainty, but I don't even know if he had positive yards in the game. I have to go back to the game stats. But it's, it, it, it was a pitiful effort on behalf of Florida State. Yeah, anchors end up with 82 yards. It seems like he had negative 82 yards. I rarely saw him pass the line of scrimmage in the game. Uh, hey, real quick. Hey, you got somebody on on, uh, on cue. Okay. All right, bring that. All right, uh, caller from the 865. You're on the cold hard truth. What's up, my brother? Tony another mother. Watley. Tony Watley. How you doing tonight, Tony? What's up? What's going on? What's up, Jay? You changing phone numbers on me, man. Hey, what's going on? So what's going on, gentlemen? How y'all doing? I was Good just, to hear your voices. Just giving uh praise where it's due. Uh, I, I did admit that the the Gators are in the AP top twenty five now after previously not being ranked. Uh, but mostly I was giving yeah, yeah. I, I was giving props to Virginia Tech. I, I can't say that I'm 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 not jumping on no bandwagons yet. That that game they played I don't really believe wasn't that. that big a deal. I don't believe that. From the time your lips moved, I didn't believe that. <laughs> well, you know I'm. I'm a Gator for life. But, yeah, no. I mean, as far as how good they're going to do this year, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to jump on in there with. I mean, they got a very favorable season as far as schedule is concerned because all their tough games are at home except for how, Tennessee. How you? So, how do you guys take away Mississippi State? How do you take away Mississippi State's head coach and the coaching staff? But yet they they ranked higher than you. Like that don't make sense. But still, like that's how much confidence that that the Associated Press and the coaches had in preseason in, in, in Florida. They're like, yeah. Yeah, no. I but you know. Earlier, you were talking about NFL real quick, just to because I was. No, we'll we'll get back to that. Thing. We're on college football right now. We can't go back and oh, forth. Come back to it? We'll come All back right. to it. All right, we'll come back to it. Uh, I'm just talking right now about Virginia Tech and Florida State for another couple of minutes here. I, you know, ah, I, it was wasn't that beautiful. That was beautiful. It was that was beautiful. Well, that's the thing. Is like Virginia like, Tech college, on, really. Virginia really Tech always last night, they, they always seem to kind of like give some of the game back. And there was opportunities where Florida State could have capitalized on it. And they just looked confused. They oh, looked lost. Florida State should have won that game. I, there was times they could have. They should have scored like four or five different touchdowns and blew it. I don't disagree. I do feel like I know it's the, the game recap says anchors had 82 yards, but it felt like it was negative 82 yards. Like it, I didn't see, I didn't really see many positive gains in the rushing game. I mean, it says they ended up with uh, Patrick. He, he ended up having 40, which I think that was on like two carries, two of two of seven carries, I think, and. Uh, Anchors had 14 carries and 82 yards. I mean, the numbers wise. Yeah, but I know they were in the red zone at least three times, Matt. Yeah. At least. Yeah. One got fum. One where they were headed there and anchors fumbled. Um, there was a couple interceptions thrown. 
by far uh, fairly man fairly the the, the the safety he had himself a game he had two interceptions he had a sack he got a tackle for loss how many tackles did a kid have where is it at fairly had himself a game yeah yeah one sack I, tackle I, I, for I, loss I'm be honest with you I don't two think- interceptions I don't think that was so much about uh, Virginia Tech as it was about Florida State. Well, the offensive line just wasn't there at all. It just it looked so slow and porous the entire game. Well, then, yeah. Then I, knew. I mean, you, you see, you see how the offensive line has been over the past couple of years, and I mean that that's something that. Uh, your boy Jimbo Fisher kind of like messed up at when it came to recruiting and all of that. So uh, right now they're still dealing with that problem. You know what I'm saying? Like years later, and uh, that's that's kind of like why you know they you know they weren't able to really do anything in in this uh, instance. But you know also they had a touchdown that should have been called. They didn't call it. And uh, after that play, since they didn't replay it, they had a penalty that set them back. And then they ended up missing that field goal. And once they missed that field goal, that was pretty much it for them. Yeah. You know, I don't think, um, you know, they could really do that much without a dominant player. Um, I mean, you you do have, you know, a high, you know, Cam Makers is a is a, you know, highly touted guy, but he's relying on the offensive line, so he could only, you know, do so much. Um, if you if you don't have an offensive line, you really can't do. Uh, much at all with your quarterback or your running back, so um, so that's that's pretty much the thing right there. And then the second thing is, it's like you know they put only three points, you know, at home, and everybody and you got folks out there talking about they want to get at Willie Taggart. I'm like, nah, this is <laughs> this is basically Jimbo Fisher's team. Willie Taggart, Willie Taggart ain't even put his imprint on this team yet. You don't really see like to me. You see any like. Freshman that's coming off right off the bat that's playing for Florida State right now in the first game of the season. No, they're no. getting somebody in uh, Francois that's coming back off of pretty much a whole year, yeah. uh, being out of commission. And then you still don't you still don't have uh, anybody in the offensive line that's any good. Yes, the you know it's supposed to be a quote unquote veteran offensive line, but they weren't any good last year. So what makes you think that they're going to be worlds better this year? You know what I mean? So. I mean, and, and 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 you got the whole thing with their defense too. That uh, that has been atrocious since Mickey Andrews stopped coaching there. So you still have that problem to deal with. So, I mean, I don't really think Florida State is going to be, you know, at that level where they're going to be uh, competing even for ACC championships, you know, for another couple of years. And those folks in Tallahassee, Do Campbell, are going to have to accept that. And if they don't. And then they try to get uh, Willie Taggart out of there. And then, man, they they might as well just I might as well just say screw that program. <laughs> well, that yeah, FSU's got some growing pains, but you know it, it's a situation of where I think FSU is starting to lose talent too because in Florida it's always been the big three. FSU, Florida, Miami. But then Miami dropped off for years, and it was just FSU and Florida. Well, now Miami's decided they want to get back on the scene. They had a really good season last year. So next thing you know, all these guys coming out of high school, they got three options versus two options in the state of Florida again. And – you're dividing that up evenly at 33.3% per squad. And I think FSU is taking the brunt of that loss. Well, I think that's all. I think all three. Uh, this is yeah. not like, you know, the 80s when uh, Florida State Miami kind of like dominated uh, when it came to like recruiting and, and national exposure, or in the '90s when it was basically Florida State and Florida, um, you know the expansion of you know how college football has uh, been nationally has 
HBO multiple programs to, you know, young people around the country. So it's not like, you know, they want to say that uh, Florida is a destination uh, spot to be at when it comes to uh, playing college football. So now, I mean, they're going to the USC's, they're going to the Ohio State, they're going to, you know, Penn State or Texas or Oklahoma or whatever it is. And, you know, you're not seeing the FSU for the Miami in the top five in recruiting anymore. And it's just starting to show over the past uh, 10 to 15 years. It, and a lot of the, you know, I, you you don't have to have the top recruiting class to win a national title. But the statistics show you have to have top right. 25 recruiting classes, multiple top 25 recruiting classes to win a national title. Because – I, I, I can't go by, I can't tell you the exact statistic on it, but there's been very few teams that have even competed for a national title without having multiple top 25 uh, uh, classes. So um, recruiting is a big part of it. Uh, now, obviously, what Jimbo has there and, and, and what was there last year um, – under underperformed at FSU uh, and Willie Taggart coming in there. And, and by the way, Willie Taggart has always started slow. His, he, he has never went in and just racked off winning anywhere. Yeah. Give him, give him credit, give him credit where it's due rebuilding uh, USF. The football program there. Give him credit due. But after what, five seasons? Last two? I mean, his total record was 24 and 25. Obviously, there was a lot of mediocrity before he was racking off eight and nine wins. So, um, yeah, again, it, all of that takes time to build up. Um, and even, even at Oregon last year. Um, they had a decent season, but it wasn't what you know what, what a lot of Oregon fans were looking for. You know, it's not like he went in there and now you know he was at the top of the Pac-12 automatically. No, it took time, and again he was there for one season. You know, and he even brought some of those recruits with him when he left. So that 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 that's kind of even a, a worse situation for Oregon. And Oregon's ranked. So, you know, it'll be, it's really going to be interesting to see how this, how, uh, how they're able to evolve, how FSU is able to evolve, because that's pretty much where they're at. They're going to have to do some soul searching, and there's going to have to be some evolution in, in what they put out on the field. Um, I think obviously I, I think it's pretty. What? How in the hell do they have the Miami Hurricanes ranked above the Florida Gators when Miami went and sucked? I mean, Miami looked absolutely horrible the other day. Well, Miami well, should have been ranked the top ten team in the first place. Yeah, exactly. It's because it's it's it was preseason and, and, ranking. Well, and, and, no, and you got and you got some, as of today get, they have them at twenty two and they got Florida at twenty five. Yeah, Florida wasn't ranked, and I know. And, and the Gators, what high school did you guys play? Charleston Southern. That's funny. So you guys, you guys <laughs> played against a baseball school at home, and, and judging from the recent political situations, I'm surprised there weren't more tiki torches involved. That, that's cute. That's cute. <laughs> hey, but hey, I still don't this... understand how the hurricanes didn't drop out of the top 25 altogether. They I, looked absolutely pathetic. I honestly don't understand how they even count yeah. that as a win on the record for Florida. Oh, wow. So, so we ain't even going to talk about Miami. 
you just don't let that go, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, man. No, we won't. Hey, no, remember. They'll get buried. No, the thing, don't worry. Like, like Tony was talking about, remember, now you had Miami coming into this season ranked at number eight. This is the this is the Miami squad that after going through what like a ten what ten wins in a row got yeah uh, three losses in a row to end the season and basically got blown out in, in almost every one of those games, but yet they're a top ten team. You know what I mean? So that shouldn't make much sense right there. This- so for me, I don't think you know them losing them losing the way that they did lose to LSU probably was a. Uh, Probably was a surprise, but the thing is, is that I didn't really think that Miami was, you know, all that good to begin with. They don't have like, you know, that superstar type of player out there that says, "Oh, and they got a scrub well, they as could a coach. Dominate. You know, you know? <laughs> I don't agree with that, but you know, the thing is that I just think people are so hyped for the U to be back that they try to force the U to be back. I think they're doing it again. They do it like okay, every but, every three years, we, every four years, we kind of force you to be back. Coach. Tell me what Mark Rick has ever done to deserve to be considered a top coach. Just because you win eight, nine games a year, every single year, and your stats look good, does not make you a top coach. He's a scrub. I don't see why How Miami is he picked sc- him to be the head coach, so, because all he's going to do Make them mediocre. How, how is, that's all he did at Georgia. That's all he's gonna do at Miami. How is it? How is that as a scrub? How are you winning? If you're winning eight or nine games a year, you're not a scrub. You're a quality head coach. Okay, but what I'm he came. He came one. He came one yard from going to the national championship game. Does not make you a good team. He came a yeah, yard. Here's, here's the thing with Mark Rick, right? Here's the thing with Mark Ritt. You're, 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 you, you've been in the program at Georgia that has, you know, basically has the same type of expectations as many of those other schools in the SEC at, like, Auburn or Alabama or Florida or LSU. And with that, you're supposed to be at least trying to compete for or at least get close to a national championship. They've only done that for one year out of that whole time that Mark Ritt has been a coach at Georgia. Oh, other than that, they really haven't. He's a head coach. And other than that, they, he really hasn't won many big games yet. Like that game against Alabama in the SEC championship game, where it basically came to the last play, was as close as they got to really competing for a national championship. So other than that, I mean, what else has Mark Rick done? And so Nothing. Now, you have him, now you have him in Miami, and the problem is, is that People in Miami are expecting Mark Rick to bring that program not only just to the level to where Georgia was, but to the level that they were at in the early 2000s. And it's not going to happen that fast. It's not really going to happen. It's not going to happen, period. It's not with Mark Rick, it's not going to happen, period. He is not a winner. He is not the guy. He's not that guy that has that fire. He's not that guy that has that edge. He's the guy that's okay with winning nine games a year and finishing second. That's Mark Rick. It's been his his motto his whole time. Tell me, show me what he did at Georgia that impressed you so much. Well, it, it's not and that I can he show overwhelmingly. You how many times Florida whooped that ass. It's not that he overwhelmingly impressed me at Georgia. I mean, he put out a lot of NFL talent out of Georgia, and he, he consistently won football it, games. We talking about I know, Jeremy. no, I know, yeah. I know. No but that's how coaches that's how coaches are judged. You win you win football perform. games and you turn oh. out NFL talent. Again, that's not my – that's not how I look at them. That's not what I'm judging them based on. But if you consistently put out eight, nine, ten uh, win seasons every year in and year out and you're pushing out talent to the NFL – that's exactly what they need. That that's the expectation for a head coach to keep their job and just to keep going forward. I mean, you only get one national title a year, and now there's four teams that actually have a shot at the national title, and they and they have a okay, playoff. But you have the same three or four teams every year fighting for the national title. 
and Mike Rick's team wasn't one of them. And ain't never been one of them. Well, I understand what you're saying, but the, the, he has been to a lot of SEC title games, obviously losing them oh, primarily wow, really? to Alabama. Get out. Primarily to Alabama. Um, in the majority of his wait, wait, tenure. What, what, was his, what was his record against the University of Florida? Thank you. I don't know. I, I don't have that off the top of my head. Losing. All I know is, all I know is that you you only had you only had that one time when they uh, kind of like blew out Florida, and that was basically it. Other than that, Florida usually was winning all of those days. You see, so I don't understand why under Urban kinda Meyer, like kind of yeah. put Mark in this. So under Urban no, Meyer, well, but even before that, like what 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 did what did Georgia do? Against Florida, you know, before that, you know, Georgia ain't done nothing against Florida. Florida whooped that ass every year. Mark Rick ain't. There's nothing special about Mark Rick. He he, he doesn't. You know, he's not one of those one of those dudes that just walk in the room and all the girls say, "Wow." He's one of those guys that walk in the room and all the girls go, eh. You know, he, he just, he, he ain't the man. I don't see what Miami thought they were getting when they went and got Mark Rick. Well, Mark Rick is Familiarity not, he, he, to the past. He is not there. He's the closest they have as a coach that they could bring in as a head coach that could link them to their glory days. That's what a lot of colleges do. You bring in somebody that's familiar with the program, Mark Rick, Jim Harbaugh, Scott Frost, guys that are familiar with your program. You can even say to an effect, Texas Tech did that. Cliff with Cliff Kingsbury. Hey. Hey, all I know is since 2000, Florida has well in six against Georgia. Okay, so that's that's not to me. That's not much of a rivalry, right there. No, I'm not, and I'm I'm not debating a rivalry so, with with Florida. What I'm saying is, Mark Rick is a call is a quality college head coach. Um, the expectations that they're looking for in Miami, those expectations are higher than I think Mark Rick will deliver on. And I agree with you guys when you're saying I'm that he hasn't agree. he hasn't delivered. He hasn't delivered in big games. He hasn't. He's been able to bring in good quarterbacks. He's been able to bring in good talent, but he doesn't win championships. They, again, he did in in year one get Miami to a place that they hadn't been at all since they've been in the ACC, and that's an an ACC champion of at least one side of it. So that's the thing is. Uh, he he obviously has elevated that program. Now is is he is he a coach that that's going to be uh, competing for a national championship every year? No, but he will compete in the ACC. He will he'll have Miami but competing in the ACC. An excitement thing, Matt. It was one of those situations of where everybody was so excited about what was going to happen and the change at Miami, and they won them ten games. But at the that's, end, well, that's Mark a them problem. Rick's program. That's a them what problem. What I'm saying is his whole sh- really kicked in, and you saw them lose them last three games, and now to get blowed out in the first game of the second year. Mark Rick ain't all that, dude. I'm telling you, he he ain't. Who said he, he was? Impressive to me at all. I, I don't. Who who was him? Imp- I don't see it. I'm saying he's a quality head coach. That's really all it is. He's a quality head coach. Not everybody has a Nick Saban. Not everybody has Urban Meyer. You know, not everybody. Actually, only those two schools do, to be frank. You know, we've we seen Chip yeah, Kelly but, in his but, first but, game at UCLA. Obviously, that didn't go over so well. Uh, Nebraska was defeated by Lightning yeah, the, twice. They did the tunnel walk. People got so hyped 
twice. They did the whole tunnel walk twice. And they said, ah, screw this. We got to cancel it. Because it was kept, I mean, it was like 1.30 in the morning. They still, uh, they still couldn't clear it. They didn't reschedule it. It's canceled for now. They may reschedule it for later in the season. We'll see. But it was it, lightning. So the the biggest anticipation of a head coach to come out this season, probably uh, storyline wise, Scott Frost. The, 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 the Huskers are stopped short of starting a game because of lightning, lightning strikes. Like I said, to me, Mark Rick is mediocre at best. Yeah, he won a lot of games. But he didn't win all. He didn't win a lot of the games that mattered. He didn't win a, win a lot of the consequential games. He didn't win a lot of the championship games. He didn't win a lot of the I'm gonna get on top of the SEC East or the SEC altogether games. He won a lot of those cupcake South Carolina, you know, those type of games. Yeah, you won six, eight, ten games a year, but. On the average, when it came to the big game, he didn't win them. He didn't win them. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, just kind of moving on to – I want to move on to the Alabama game. Um, how, what, what did you – what was your guys' feeling of of Alabama this weekend? Did, was it – do you find them impressive or is it just look like business as usual? Business as usual. I mean, they're playing Louisville. Louisville, you know, ain't really you know that much of a good team, you know, to begin with, and they already had like you know their best player already gone. So I didn't really you know get that much out of it. Um, I I didn't really see much of the game at all. Um, I, they they basically uh, put it like a uh, scrimmage of sorts uh, to try to see who they would evaluate as who their quarterback is going to be. Um, uh, they they look like a much they look like a better offense with Tag Valor as a quarterback, which you know kind of is was expected even with the uh, national championship game last year. Uh, but you know, other than that, I, I really didn't see you know much coming out of that game. I just you know waited out until you know they have something else uh, that's of uh, more significance than uh, playing someone like a Louisville. You know what I mean? I agree. Absolutely 100% with you, James. That, that game was not a game to measure my, to measure Alabama because Louisville is not a top caliber team. Louisville had a superstar quarterback for a couple of years and they played pretty good because couple, of their superstar quarterback. A couple of superstar quarterbacks. And because, right, but he's gone. And because he's gone, they go back down to being average. And, you know, everybody's looking at Louisville from what they've done over the last couple of years. But that, that team from a couple of years ago is not the team Alabama played last night. And because that's not the team Alabama played, I can't really sit and say whether I was impressed or not impressed with Alabama. swing um they i think they've kind of uh, their 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 peak has come and went there there has to there's gonna have to be some big changes in recruiting i don't i don't think the same kind of guys are buying in there at louisville um they're doing a good job of getting like interior linemen i saw i do see the talent there though on the def especially on the defensive side for Louisville. I do see the talent there. I don't think there's enough of it and quality and quality play together team wise to really slow down a team like Alabama or, or a top tier um another top tier, you know, power five school. You they're, they're just not going to really compete. Uh they're not on that level anymore. So um it, again, it was right. more. I, I agree. I think it was more Alabama as usual, business as usual, uh, not really doing much. It, it wasn't. I, again, I don't find it really impressive. 
uh, Alabama did. I didn't find any, any where uh, I think oh, it was a wow. Yeah, I just feel that. Uh, um, you know someone I did find very impressive watching this week? Auburn. Auburn impressed me against Washington. Well, that, I Auburn mean, impressed me. Well, let's, let's, get, into, let's get into that game because that, um, I mean, that was a very winnable game, the entire game for both teams. And, and as much as you say Auburn was impressive, I think I was actually more impressed by Washington. Um, they kind of tripped over their own feet a couple times, and that's why they lost. Uh, it wasn't anything that was just overwhelming by um, overwhelmed by a- Auburn. However, I will say I think the offensive line eventually wore on the defensive line of Washington, and they just weren't um, they weren't able to fight it out in the trenches as long. I think they kind of lost some win there towards the end of the game. And I think that's what, what kind of gave a few more yards here and there to Auburn to put them in, uh, to put them in a better position and ultimately winning. You know, it, it really was a game of inches. I felt like the entire game. Um, but it, I, I'm not surprised at all that Auburn won, but I don't think this hurt Washington whatsoever. I don't think it hurt their chances for a national title, especially being in the first game of the year and probably the the third best team in the in the SEC. Uh, who who uh, this weekend the only SEC team that lost was Tennessee, and it looked like the dumpster fire it's been for the past couple years. So uh, Florida might beat them this year. Yeah. For me, for me, I was impressed by Auburn. Now, the one thing about Auburn that I can say is I don't think Auburn's going to have that impressive of a year when it comes to wins and losses because they have a lot of tough road games this year. They have to play Alabama in Alabama. So, uh, so it, it's one of the R in, Tallah- in Tuskegee or whatever it's called. What, what what is Alabama's home? Tuscaloosa. Well, they have two. Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. They do play in two different places, yeah. though. They actually do play in two different places. But, but uh, I, you know, for me, I, did, I I know Auburn's whole season is going to be suspect because of the tough games that they have on the road. So they may not come away with this season with like an SEC West championship or anything like that, but I think Auburn is going to ruin a lot of teams' uh, national title hopes this year, and I think uh, the the Crimson Tide might be one of them. See, I picked picked Auburn to win that game Um, last year, Uh, and they kind of trade, so it's, it's probably Alabama's year. To win it, yeah, because well, they're at home. Yeah, yeah. Um, Auburn. I thought you know Auburn. I mean, I thought LSU had a tough schedule, but I mean, this is like the SEC West, so you have you're gonna have LSU Auburn playing in you know less than a couple of weeks, and then Auburn still has um, Mississippi State. They still have Georgia to play. That's on the road, and Alabama is on the road, so. Yeah, yeah like Tony was game. saying, it's yeah, and oh yeah, that Mississippi State game is on the road too. So yeah, they, they're they're going to be going through some you know tough tough uh, things here over the course of this season. So they uh, they needed this game here against Washington that was you know to get them uh, going. But I I didn't really think that you know they were overly impressive of sorts. I just thought you know both teams had to really take over the game. They just really didn't. And that, that uh, what was that, the fourth down here, Auburn scored the touchdown was basically the difference of the game. It wasn't really anything that separated either one of those two teams. Yeah, it's uh, it, 
it was a it was a good game. I look forward to uh, Washington uh, the next game against in North Dakota. Then they go uh, to Utah. They have Arizona State, which actually looked ga- good this this weekend. Henry, uh, the the uh, Harry was it Harry? Yeah, uh, the f- for uh, Arizona State, the wide receiver, he looks like a beast. Um, BYU, they look pretty decent this weekend. They have BYU and Arizona State at home. Then they take a road trip to to LA, back up to play, then back to play Oregon. They have Colorado at home. They go to uh, Cal. Then they have Stanford at home, Oregon State at home, and then they go to Washington State. So they they have kind of lucked out getting Stanford at home, getting uh, BYU, Arizona State at home. Um, the only ones that are kind of tough on the road will probably be uh, probably Oregon, UCLA, well, again, UCLA, we don't even know. I mean, UCLA loses this weekend to UConn. Lost to UConn. Yep, and they got Oklahoma. And they got Oklahoma this coming week. Yeah. So, I, uh, Chip Kelly stepped in some – or Cincy, I'm sorry. Then It was just UConn. They lost to Cincy. 26-17. I mean, that's two scores. So, uh, they they basically scored uh, two touchdowns. They scored a touchdown in the first quarter. They were scoreless in the second quarter. Like, basically, beginning halves, they scored. Other than that, they got shut out. But it was those nine points in the fourth quarter, that 9-0 run, that broke is what they won. That nine, Those nine points is what won it, the game for, for Cincinnati. So... Chip Kelly era has started pretty slowly. I mean, his quarterback through, and the thing is, yeah. he has one of those dual threat quarterbacks right now. Thompson's that guy that he he he's he's better running the ball. He's better creating things with his legs, and then passing off of that. Um, I mean, they Warren, they got Warren. Uh, uh, since he had the right idea, they got they got their running back Warren going. He put up 142 yards and a touchdown on him. Penn State almost became a victim this, this weekend. Yep. yep. People sleep on App State. I don't know why. App State is – they're never a punk. That's never a punk play right there. They will – you will get quality play out of Appalachian State. Yeah, and, I mean, this is um, – oh, I don't think – oh, that was another thing about this past week. Um, the Big Ten – I know I know Tony's going to say something about this, but the Big Ten was not impressive at all this week. Um, not impressive I mean, you, at you, all. You had – They looked you like the big, State, the big zero. The big zero. You had Penn zero. State that, um, you know, almost – that almost lost to – uh, Appalachian State. You had Michigan State that you know went to the last play uh, to win their game at home. Um, you had you know Michigan losing to Notre Dame, and it wasn't really that much of a hey, game. Notre Dame, you know? Notre Dame looked like they had the better athletes. Man, they looked like they had Notre the better Lame, athletes. Notre Dame, they, they find it. They find a way to screw up every single season. So that's the thing about that. Um, exactly. And you know, if they could have, they'd have put Notre Dame up at number one after that win. They are determined to get them sorry ass fuck guys in the fucking national championship. <laughs> I don't get it. They are determined. The only thing, um, I guess was semi impressive about uh what happened with the Big Ten is Maryland's win over Texas. Um that's their second that's their second win over Texas in consecutive what is going years. On in Texas? Yeah. Maryland you know, look, they, they look good. Right. Maryland they did it, not get it right. Maryland looked good. It wasn't just that like te- Texas didn't look like they could get it together, but Maryland actually looked good. Mm-hmm. I watched bits well, and pieces a, of that. They game. got some uh 
think it's like a wide receiver out there in Maryland that, that they always do like <laughs> blowing past everybody. And, and, and Maryland's and playing with a chip on their shoulder after all of that uh, might. stuff with that athlete gun. They might have yeah, to call Maryland yeah. burner you, man. They they get the track stars out there playing football. I'm telling you. They playing with a chip. That makes a difference in the game. Yeah. So I mean that that right there was kind of like a uh, thing that that stood out for the Big Ten. But other than that, nothing really impressive. Um, I didn't really expect much coming out of the uh, Ohio State game or the um, yeah Wisconsin game. So I mean that that's pretty much you know what you got out of that. So um, that pretty what? much like sums it up as far as I know. What'd you make of the oh, SC? You know was me, not always, good either. That's what I was about to say. I, 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 I complain about the the uh, rankings are rigged. The top ten every year preseason starts out with ten teams from three conferences and uh, one team from the Big Twelve. Oklahoma and. It's one of those situations of where they know all these teams are going to have to play each other, but it's a guarantee that one of those teams from one of those three conferences is going to make the four. And then you put somebody from the Big 12 or you put somebody from somewhere and they'll be the four. How's that rigged? But you always know that the SEC – the Big Ten and the ACC are going to be in the Final Four. That's that's a given. That's a guarantee. Well, the the Big Ten didn't have a team in last year. Is either well, the Big up. Ten or is the or, or it's going to be the uh, you know the Big Twelve? But the Big Ten last year was just you know everybody so, ended I mean, up beating everybody. Yeah, they yeah. Know, cannibalized themselves. But other than that, but other than that, you 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 basically had some type of Big Ten team in the playoff each year. Um, Every you year. had like a you know Ohio State or Michigan State was you know up in there. You know what I mean? So other than that, what, what else? What else you had? I mean, Pac-12 only had like Washington there that one year, and that was pretty much it. You didn't really see the Pac-12 in the playoff uh, other than that first year when Oregon was in it. Well, Oregon, that, yeah, Oregon and Washington has both been in it. Yeah, that's okay. What, I'm but what I'm saying is that's two examples. If you look back, I guarantee you, you will see the SEC, the Big Ten, and the ACC every year, except for you know that one year when some team from the Big Twelve or some team from the Pac Twelve really does good. And makes it, but other than that, it's the SEC, the ACC, and the Pat in the Big Ten every yeah. single year. Yeah. Right. So if I'm not mistaken, we've had the playoff for about four seasons now, and Alabama has been in the playoff every single year. So that's the yes. ACC right there. Then you have Clemson in there the last or three years, FSU. and then FSU yeah. that first year. So that's yeah. the ACC right there. So those are basically the two constants, and then you have Ohio State. So Ohio State was in it, and Michigan State was in it. So there goes a the big ten right there. Every right. single – it's the three. It's all about money. I keep telling people, this shit ain't about who's the better team. It's about who's going to make them the most money. And those are the three conferences that's going to make them the most money – in those championship games from viewership and all of that stuff, and that's why they're there. It ain't got nothing to do with who's the better team. It has nothing to do with who's the better team. Because if it's the better team, start out with all 64 or 64, wind it down, mm. go from just like you do in basketball. 64, nah, it's, just, 32, it's, 60, it's too short of a 84. season. It's a high-contact sport that, that's just not – not possible. Let me bring in. Uh, we got David up in Atlanta. How are you doing tonight, David? What's going on, y'all? It's going good. What's up, man? 
So what did you make of this uh, this first week of college football action? What stood out for you the most? I mean, nothing really stood out. I mean, didn't I didn't I didn't see anything that really surprised me. Everything pretty much happened the way I thought it was going to happen. You saw Miami losing like that? No, I saw them potentially losing. What, what do you think? I knew LSU wasn't no. They not they not a terrible team, especially defensively. Now what, what? I, I saw I saw Miami giving a much better performance than that. I ain't gonna lie to you. I I, I thought it would be close at the end. But I saw Miami giving a better performance than that. What well, What do you think their yeah, biggest I mean, struggle they, was? Even if they give a good, the biggest struggle is they can't. They don't have an offense. Is, so, is I it, mean, if you don't if you don't have an offense, no matter how good your defense is, is it just because they're juggling a quarterback, or just like the the system isn't working together? Because it looked like they were lost. I think the kind of similar thing with FSU. They looked lost at times. Like they. Yeah, they just don't have any. Con- they can't have any continuity. They can't. You know. You know how it is with, especially with younger kids, is if if they can't get success, they get discouraged. So you got to try to right. figure out how to get how to give them some success, and they can they either get their confidence up, and then now they they feel confident in what they're doing. If they keep losing every time they step out on the field, they never find their confidence, and then it just it just starts with being like an avalanche on top of them because you're dealing with 18, 19, 20 year old kids. And that's just that's just how they are. You're not dealing with grown men who could take a lot of that and come back late in the game. So when I seen how they was playing early, I was like, ain't no way in the world they're gonna win this game because they couldn't do nothing on offense. They couldn't. And LSU got a good defense. Like it's dudes on that LSU defense that's gonna get drafted. Yeah, most of the guys. So <laughs> if you can't do nothing, yeah, you can't do nothing on offense. Your de- Miami got a good defense, but they just couldn't do nothing on offense. Nothing. Yeah, it's. It- and I know I, this is going to really push him to start by, uh, experimenting at quarterback, which I, I don't think – I think some of the younger guys might get their chance to get in there. Uh, I, Fra- Frazier's uh, time there is probably – has probably passed at this point. Um, you think that's fair to say? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think – they, I don't, I don't, I didn't know that guy was coming back at quarterback. I really don't like him, but I haven't seen who else they have. I don't know if that's the best, the best that they have. But the real issue is offensive line. So the, you know, the issue is offensive line is not strong, and the quarterback is not strong, and so it don't matter about the skill players. Miami got good receivers, but they can't ever get the ball. The the ball is either off, it's not on target, or they don't have time to throw it. And then if they run the ball, it's a holding play. So when your offensive line and your quarterback not working, the, all the rest of the skill guys don't mean anything. Right. True. I can tell you, um, I guess, as as a Gator Prep fan, Will Greer impressed me from Virginia, uh, West Virginia this weekend against Tennessee. I told you that was Will a dumb. Greer yeah, I agree. Was I, I, was, I was really shocked. Why? Yeah. He, he, he might end up in he might end up in the Heisman. He, yeah. he was the he was the best quarterback to come through Florida. I don't know how you guys thought you had like some morals or ethics or something with that guy where you let him transfer out. Like that was the dumbest move ever. <laughs> I can tell you this. West Virginia has a very, very good schedule this year. They might be the team that when you looking down at the end of December, you might be sitting there going, wow, West Virginia for real? Yeah, they. I mean, if you look at their schedule, they got a really good schedule to be able to do something crazy this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to, trying to check that out right now. I mean, they, mm, oh, they got an NC State game next. And then, hmm. Yeah, they really don't have much of a. See, yeah, they, they really don't have that much of a test until late in the season. I mean, everything is it's a back end schedule. See, that man. was see that's Very a back end. they did a smart yeah. thing this year. Instead, so they did out of conference with Power Five schools, and they did it in their time zone and their region. They already are stretching it with time zones having to go back and forth with the Big Twelve. 
that put stress on them. They were smart. They kept their out-of-conference schedule closer to home and less stress on them. That was smart. That's smart. Uh, that's smart After scheduling. Virginia Tech or, or West Virginia may be when when they go to play uh, TCU. TCU, yeah. When they go to play TCU in November, I think Virginia Tech could be in the top. Or uh, West Virginia could be in the top ten because oh, I think they can win all them games up to then. Yeah, he's a fear. Because I, I think they can beat Texas in Texas. Oh, West, West Virginia? Looked yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would take West Virginia. Yeah, they look like – see, they and always so, look like – that's the thing is like this isn't the first time uh, West Virginia looks like they, they're, they're towards the top of uh, – among the top in the Big 12. It's just that – uh, they just end up fizzling out at the end of the year. I think, and a lot of it comes down to all the traveling that they have to do back and forth, back and forth, back and forth uh, between games. Again, that was their their choice by joining the Big 12 instead of trying to, you know, stay in their their region. So they wanted to go, but they wanted to go into the Big 12. So it's kind of, you got to. They could have been in the Big 10. They could well, have. No, I don't think they could have. Been. They should have. They should have stayed in the team. They didn't. The Big Ten. Yeah. The Big Ten wasn't interested in them because West Virginia doesn't have that same market. That's why they went from exactly. Maryland. So that's Maryland. why I was like, yeah, that's why I was like, nah, they couldn't be in the Big Ten. They don't have that type of market. Yeah, Maryland. So Maryland has the DC market. Been, yeah, this is probably the only move that they could make because I don't think the ACC would have accepted them either. And they weren't going to be a part of that American conference. You know, they wanted to move up. So yeah. that's the thing about them. They they actually, you know, made move going to the Big 12. Something like um, that's something that U- USF should have did because they have, they have a big market. But they didn't really, you know, appeal to any of those schools like they really wanted to be there. So they could have been on um, – they could have been in the Big 12, too, but they just didn't want to jump on it. Well, they uh, yeah, they kind of – the Big 12 kind of drug their feet on that. probably Oklahoma State. Because they play TCU in Oklahoma at West Virginia. And if they're – let's say they're undefeated after coming out of Texas in November – and in the top ten, when TCU come to West Virginia, they gonna be pumped. And I, you know, I don't really know what TCU looking like this year, but they they're they're in the top twenty five, ain't they? Yeah, in the middle, right there in the middle. Um, well, they're about to play Ohio State next. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think, wait, um, yeah, they're going to play them, yeah, they're going to play them on the, um, actually on the 15th. Then this year you got, yeah, they got, they're going to be already playing Ohio State and Oklahoma before playing T, uh, West Virginia, so. TCU won't be at the top 10. I don't see it being Oklahoma or Ohio State. I'm telling you, West Virginia is going to be – I'm going with West Virginia as my uh, underdog, as, you know, the Cinderella. All right. So so that, that's your uh, – your bastard child this year? Is that what they are? Yeah. Yeah, they I'm, – I'm adopting them for one year. Because you're not confident in in Florida, you got time to watch other stuff. I, I don't know what to think of Florida right now. I really don't. I I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't like the whole Mullen uh, coach thing. I didn't like it. I didn't think it was a good idea. 
you know, yes, Mullen was there during the national championship with Leak and all that, but you know me, that's 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 just not the way I would have went. Mullen was not the way I would have went, and because that's not the way I would have went, this is his first year. I'm not going to be down on the man because I don't personally like him. I'm gonna let him show me who would you hire deserves to be. Who, who would you coach. who would you win all in on? Who would you push? Shane Kemp would make a couple. You know who I would have hired. Who? Lane <laughs> Kiffin. That's who I would have hired. You ain't even gotta ask me that. Lane Kiffin is who I would have hired. Lane Kiffin is the best coach in the NCAA that's not in a top program. I've said that a thousand times. I'll say it a thousand more. Lane Kiffin is the best college football coach not in a top program. He is the Saban that ain't being seen. Well, Lane uh, Kiffin is the man. Had a bit of a struggle this weekend and, uh, in Oklahoma. Okay. He's playing with a, play a cupcake uh, team. He, he, they, that ain't, he, that team ain't got no. He I'm when just he saying. went down there to Florida International or Florida Atlantic or whichever one of them he picked. Yeah, the owls. I couldn't believe he went and did that. That just broke my heart because he deserves so much better than that. And he will, but then but that next move will be to the NFL. It won't be to another college team. It'll be to the NFL. Even though I, I am like, a Lane Kiffin fan, I I will not deny that. Yeah, they got blowed out last week. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like Lane Kiffin. I, I mean, I like Lane Kiffin. I really do. Everybody, no, everybody, everybody want to talk about. Make him out to be a bad I mean, guy because he left Tennessee. I can't. But if I had that opportunity to talk to to coach at my favorite team that I had just left, and they were gonna make me head coach, I left too. I mean, I can't knock a fellow Nebraska. I don't blame him for going back to USC. I don't blame him for that. I'd have done it too. Well, no, that's the thing. Is like uh, he he wasn't. He wasn't going to go anywhere. Like bouncing after one year just re-solidifies what people were saying about him. You know, it just, it just re-solidified it. So bouncing after one year didn't do anything to help the case. Doesn't repair. But what's wrong with being an opportunist? What's wrong with being an opportunist? But the thing is the opportunities will Ain't still be there. supposed to be? Ain't he, that what we all supposed to be? When the opportunity presents itself, we supposed to take it. The know, man wanted to be head coach at USC. He didn't see it coming. He went to Tennessee, then shit went at USC, and they came to him and said, you still want to be head coach? He said, yes. Well, that's the thing. It, it wasn't the, – the knock on him is he, he just – he he just takes advantage of schools, and he leaves them hanging high and dry. And had he done that, it would have been more of the same. And you know, in a business where you're always looking to find your the next big deal or big opportunity, I mean, he had a, his dream job was the SC job. He got it. I mean, he was it was in some of the worst situations he could have been in. Uh, under and he didn't anticipate. Absolutely. He didn't anticipate all of, I mean, the sanctions being as tough as they were. Uh, you know, be as as hard right. as it was. So, uh, you know, that was that was a struggle, a big struggle. He took so. over at the wrong time. He just wanted it so bad he couldn't say no. The best thing is that job doesn't come but, around. All the time, it's like a once in a lifetime job well, for him to take that. So yeah, basically. So I mean, what? Well, yeah, what could he do? I mean, what other chance he would have had at that? I mean, it's USC. You know what I mean? Exactly. So 
whether either he would have had to wait it out, you know, for a couple of years and make sure everything cleared out or, you know, just try to take it then, you know. And if he if he tried to wait it out, the chance, chances are he probably wouldn't have got that job. He probably would have ended up either hiring somebody else or, you know, still having a guy uh, that was there. Right. No, they would have. They would have. That's hired. why I say I don't blame him. I I cannot blame him for doing what he did. I'd have done it. But I, I don't know if that sets the standard very high. If he would have done it. But come on, Urban Meyer did the same shit. Urban Meyer had a national championship game uh, team. No, he didn't do the same to thing. Go to Ohio State. Shit. Stuff got really real, was getting really real there. And he didn't want to be a part of it when it was falling apart. And he was having health issues, too. He didn't want people to find out that he was a part of it. That's what it was. Maybe that was part of it, too. Maybe that's what part of it was, too. You think think Dan Mullen left Mississippi State just because he, oh, Florida was my dream job? He literally took a step down. He took a step down in actually quality of, of, of winningness of programs to a, a more prestigious, uh, I guess you would say, more prestigious program in Florida. But now, now you're having to rebuild. I mean, Mississippi State wasn't. It wasn't like they they weren't having some issues there. Mississippi you know? State in a winning program. Don't give me that now. But they're don't, in the don't West. Ask me on that. They're, there, there, there was a time when Mississippi State couldn't win a game. Didn't Florida? Didn't Florida didn't like make it to the SEC? Champ- Mississippi or the- State. There was a time in the SEC when didn't y'all win the SEC the with a losing State record or some something, something like that? Like a couple years ago. I mean, it's not like it's not like the East was was a challenging division in the SEC. Let's face it, the SEC is the West. The whole- That's it. That's what it's been. At Mississippi State. And UF had never lost to Mississippi State. Okay. That was the whole reason I was fired. I mean, Mullen, Mullen did a good job at, at Mississippi State. Yeah, he did. He did a good job, though, because they don't have a lot of money. So you figure if he could go to Florida with a bigger budget, you know, you don't know what he could do. But he wanted the Miami job, too. You know, he just wanted to get somewhere where he could get a bigger budget. I think Mullen can do good at Florida. I really do. I mean, I'm I'm not going to downgrade the man or what he did because you, you're right, David. He did a great job at Mississippi State. He put Mississippi on the Mississippi State on the map when Mississippi State ain't never been on the map. I'm just saying. So just yeah. that I'm just saying it was is, is good. He wanted to get where he had more money. I get that makes sense. You know, we want to expand from there, but. He was like still. He was like their fourth or fifth choice. I mean, think about it. <laughs> think about but it. It don't matter if he's the fourth. I mean, go ahead, Bill. My bad. No, nah, no. Nah, I was just saying, like Mississippi State had like a number one ranking when he exactly. was there. You know what I mean? Exactly. He ain't never had. I mean, he was there. Yeah, he wasn't gonna be anybody's first choice. But you know, because coming from Mississippi State, you ain't gonna be somebody's first choice. But. He's, he, he's able to try to get in a better situation because, like you say, he came from Florida. He came from a winning program now with the Mississippi State. So he's going back to Florida. Like you say, let's see what he could do with a bigger budget. I don't think his his concepts and principles are going to work at Florida. But, I mean, somebody had to get the job. Right. I, I Like I said, I was not happy that they gave that job to Mullen. I, I was not happy. Uh, I I know everybody's got this whole thing against Ke- Lane, but if you look at Lane winning, Lane Kiffin is a winner. You you cannot deny that. Lane Kiffin took that sorry ass Florida Atlantic team and won the conference in that that whole ninety second first year. He took a team that was like one in twelve and made them twelve and one in a year. I mean, he, he he lost the games that he was supposed to, and then beat, won the games that he was supposed to. I mean, 
what would you would expect from him, you know? Um, but yeah, I, sixty seconds. I, I wanna I wanna move into uh, a few of the other games. Uh, really, really, kind of highlighting more so on some of the new head coaches. Uh, we already talked about um, Chip Kelly. Kind of had some struggles there in this first game, losing to Cincy at home uh, in his opener. Uh, and then we saw Sumlin losing his opener to BYU. But uh, Arizona State and Herm Edwards seem to have fared pretty damn well uh, in, in his opener uh, there at Ten Florida seconds. State. And, and the funny thing is, it's like Herm Edwards was like one of the biggest questions uh, of those hires. Again, it was against the University of Texas San Antonio. So a 49-7 win is some, somewhat expected. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, the team looked good. Um, the quarterback, uh, Manny Manny Wilkins, he, he clearly he's a, a dual threat. Put up 237 yards and four touchdowns through the air. And uh, Nikhil Henry... Or Nikhil Harry, rather. Uh, he looked like a beast. Uh, he, he's the big receiver. He runs some decent routes, has some decent speeds. 140 yards receiving and two touchdowns on six receptions. I mean, you can't, can't knock that at all. And then uh, Neil Benjamin put up another 131 yards and a touchdown on the ground. So uh, what did you guys think of... of some of the new head coaches' first games. James, I mean, you, game. you already heard what I said about about Willie Taggart. Um, Thing with Herm, um, I mean, he'll probably have those guys that are going to stay competing. Just um, don't know what they're going to do against some of these teams. They do have uh, Michigan State and. Um, and uh, Stanford at home, but they got to play Washington, USC, and uh, Oregon on the road, and Arizona on the road. So I, I think they're going to be like a kind of like a middle of the pack team. I don't think they're really there yet, but at least they had a good start. You know what I mean? Um, Chip Kelly, something tells me that he this is the wrong fit for him. Usually, a late to me is not is not a uh, program. Where you where you would think that you would kind of like build yourself as a as a serious um, contender for you know, a national championship, um, they're always going to be to to people like USC's little brother when it comes to football. So I don't see him, you know, kind of like luring those recruits like USC does. I don't think he has that type. I don't think they they give him that type of budget. So I don't know why he would like go to a team like UCLA. Because you're you're already competing with another team that's in the same city to try to get the recruits that you want to get, so I don't think he's really going to go that far with uh, with UCLA. He's I mean, actually he's done a pretty good job yeah, recruiting Chip, Chip recruiting Jones in that to area. Me is the exact opposite of Lane Kiffin. I think he's just he just got lucky. He had Mariota. Just you know, there are those teams just like with Louisville. You get that superstar. And when you get that superstar, he carries everybody. He lifts every, you know, it's like uh, it lifts all boats. It, it's a situation of where I think Chip Kelly at Oregon had Mariota, ran with Mariota, had an amazing run with Mariota, but the man wasn't too shit. He went to the NFL. He showed he wasn't shit in the NFL. And now he's don't came back. And well, I just, you we know, can't, I, I've never been a Chip Kelly fan. We can't forget his 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 offensive coordinator did just go twelve and zero last year at UCF and revived a program in two Chip years. Kelly. I know, but I'm saying we can't forget he did have Scott Frost as his coordinator while he was in Oregon, while he had all that success. So it's is is it all just Chip Kelly? 
or was some of his staff? Like I said, I don't part of the help. None of it to Chip Kelly. I personally, I don't. I don't like the guy. I, I, I don't think he's a – I mean, he's obviously a good coach, but yeah. I just, you know, I, I don't he know. Is. I don't like Chip Kelly. I ain't never liked him. Uh, Wally, you cracked me up. I'm man. not on the Chip Kelly bandwagon. David, what do you make of Herm? I mean, he, all he did was win a game. I mean, he's not going to do nothing with Arizona State. I mean, that's that's a that's a I mean, at best an eight year project. He's not going to last eight years though. So, you know, that's just I don't even know why he took that damn job. As old as he is, he want to take a, a coaching job at Arizona State. He must have been bored. <laughs> you had an easy TV job. Just sit back and get them TV checks. He wanted to get out you know there, saying? but I guess it's what he. It's wanted. all that. It's he, all that. He wanted uh, to get out of the booth. But that's the thing is he, he he keeps getting those little tastes every year at the, the the senior bowl, you know he gets that taste every year at the senior bowl and the under and the Under Armour and the Under Armour games he keeps getting those little tastes little tastes. Terms of most baby, I get it. But at his you know at his age, the chance that he gets a a big job is slim to none. So you go to Arizona State and you got to try to build that program into something, and it's like. I just doubt it happens because the only way they're going to well, do yeah. it is with California talent. Yeah, or, or Texas. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be – I mean, they got decent nah, talent there in Arizona. Texas guys. You don't think he gets Texas? They don't. They don't have to play. No, they don't. They don't have a population. They don't have a population. You know what's crazy? The thing about um, Arizona State is they're supposed to be, like, one of the largest, like, uh, colleges as far as student population goes. And yeah, they They are. have that whole little – you know that whole little thing about the the, the girls that attend Arizona State and whatever it is, but that doesn't that's not enough to attract you know players from around the country to go to. So it's like with Herm Edwards there, I, I just think it's like a good little four maybe five year stop, and then after that he's gonna just you know roll on out. Yeah, I, I believe I don't know if he lasts four or five years, but you know it's just like I said. I figure he had an age where he said, "Hey, let me try to see if I can do this head coaching thing," because he did it in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Let me try to see can I do it at college. He a good role model for kids, so he a good person for for kids to be around. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But I don't see them building into a, a big powerhouse because, like I said, for Arizona team to win, they got to get California talent. They don't have the population to recruit internally and to build a top level team. It just ain't gonna happen. And they in a bad part of the country, you know, because they in Arizona, ain't nothing out there. I agree. <laughs> well, Florida people always say there's I nothing agree. anywhere. There ain't nothing out there. If it ain't California, there's nothing there. It, there's literally nothing there. There's nothing. <laughs> Oh man! There's nothing in Arizona. Y'all Florida people crack me up. There ain't I mean, nothing there. I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> hey, there. It's, it's, it's New York. It's There's nothing in New York. They got Florida. a city. Whatever. If you, if you ain't in California, Texas, and Florida recruiting, you wasting your time. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's just funny. You know what I'm saying. I, I feel you. I mean, it's, it's yeah. I'm, it, and then the thing is that he. Do they have the, you know, then you got to have a budget to recruit heavily out of state. But I mean, if you look at a state like Arizona, like, I mean, ask yourself how much of the in-state population is probably like Mexican, Latino. And they not known to produce yeah, football true. players. You see what I'm saying? So you just in a bad region where if you go to California, they Don't still got a large. Mark Sanchez, that. <laughs> Mark Sanchez. Yeah, but he, you know, he's from Cali, though. You know what I'm saying? But that look, that, that Arizona, New Mexico uh, that little pocket that they in is just is just really full yeah. of Latino Mexicans, and they not known to produce football players. You got a few, but you look at their physique. That's not a physique right. of a football player. They just not built like that. Right. And that's your population. You ain't got a lot of six three Mexicans. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And if you go to like New Mexico, I man, now almost that whole state is Mexicans. Right. Because it because it really is Mexico. Like all them states is really Mexico. So that's what you left with. So he, he it's, to me, it's just a bad to try to build a football team in that area. I wouldn't take that job, but if that's what that man want to do, that's what he want to do. He a grown man, you know. He knows what's best for him. Yeah. Shoot, man, they don't even they don't even recruit over there uh, by uh, Bishop Gorman. You don't see none of those folks going to Arizona State. 
Yeah. They might get one player, like a good running back or something. But a team, I doubt it. Yeah, he might put one good running back and just tell the running back, you know, we'll put the whole, we'll build the whole team around you. Hey, uh, they've been, they've been like, you know, in the top, like top ten since um, uh, who is that dude? That Jake dude, uh, Jake, 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 Jake Plummer, Plummer, or Jake Snake, Jake yeah, Plummer, Jake Plummer. Yeah, man. Yeah. That, ain't been, they ain't been that good since. Yeah, it was a, the la, his last game. It was a Fiesta Bowl against Nebraska. Yeah, that was like the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, that's been a while. Yeah, that's the nineties. So that was that was that in between. You know, it was uh that was the ninety six. That was ninety six. Yeah, that's the nineties. Yeah, yeah, that's the nineties. Because I wasn't he, a, he used to play with him on the video game. Yeah. So that's yeah, the thing. Though. I did too. You know, I did too. <laughs> yeah. So you know, Kiffin, Kiffin taking the job in Lauderdale. At least you in the loop. You know, you see, you ain't at a big school, but at least you in the loop because you're still he's, in Florida. You in the loop, and but he's in Fort loop, Lauderdale. In Florida talent. He's in West yeah, Palm, man. You in the loop. The dude's in. Yeah, but the go the go way out there to, to Arizona is like, I don't for football. I don't know, bro. But do what you got to do. In the I think of Herm just wanted back in the game. He, yeah, I believe that. I agree. He with had you. an he itch he wanted. To, I think he just had an itch he wanted to scratch. That's all it was. And Arizona State yeah. said, "Yeah, let's yeah. do Herm it." Just yeah. wanted back in the game. Yeah, I, I agree with you. He should have took a coordinator job, though, in my opinion. Ah, uh, he, he's he's he too well known. Too. He's too well known to be a coordinator now. I feel you. That's right. what it is. He couldn't do I that. I feel you. But they they reached out to I him though. But that's the thing is he they reached out to him. Yeah, they wanted him because he bring he brings a name, he brings a lot of credibility. They trying to build their program up. The question is, right. what kind of money they gonna motivator. put behind him? He's a motivator. He's a motivator. But what kind of money they gonna put behind him? They gonna put serious money behind him? If they really serious about it? They gonna put real money behind that guy? Because I, I keep telling you, I'm gonna say it again. Anytime they anytime they bring in these black coaches for these these you know remodeling programs. It's for you to get it to a certain point, and all of a sudden you ain't good enough no more. That's the that's, 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 that's the playbook. Else. Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah. That's the playbook. So you got to know that when you coming in. That's so, how they gonna play it. So what's the play on that with with Sumlin taking the job in Arizona? Does that say Kevin Sumlin's not an yeah. NFL coach? Yeah. What, 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 that he had to take the Arizona job? I mean, I don't think any well, of what us. Other job was he, what other job? What other job was he gonna take? I'm just they saying. They ran them out of A. They ran out of A&M. They did. I'm not disputing that, but I'm just saying, like, he could have he could have posted up into the booth for a year. He didn't. He didn't have to take a job right away. Yeah, but what job was available to him? What I'm saying is that ESPN what you see with, a, with a lot of black coaches. Yeah, but that's not a football job. Yeah, you're talking about football. So what, you, what you're telling, but, 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 but what I'm saying is, what you're telling me is that. If he takes a TV job, then there's going to be a prime job available out there for him to slide into, you know, whenever he decides that's what he's going to do. That's not how black coaches get, get hired. The black next coaches season. Bad, they get bad situations and get told they got to turn the situation around. They don't get great situations. It's like when he, once they got the Texas job. Texas was at the bottom when he got that job. If Texas was not at the bottom, they never would have, they never would have considered him for that position. Exactly. Exactly. See, see what, what you got is – when you got these programs that are basically at the bottom, their overall exactly. work is low. So exactly. They're not gonna really spend that much on the coach when they, you know, aren't really gonna be expecting much of a return out of it um within those first few years. So what they do is they get these coaches and if they turn the program around then that then that brings up their value. So they basically got more out of what they spent. And so once they do that and then they just get their coach out. So they already got the money, pretty much their uh, quote-unquote profit, so that they can just use that money on another coach instead of using it on the coach that got them to that point. I'm just saying, I don't think Kevin Summer needed to take the that job. I think that he could have posted up for a year in the booth and would have gotten a better job on the other side of it. I think Kevin Summon was a good enough coach. What better job? What, what, 
I don't know well, because it, it don't exist it. yet. I can't tell you. I, I don't. I, I don't have a crystal ball. What, what I'm what, saying, what, but, but listen, Matt, what they're what they're trying to say to you, Matt, that you're you're obviously not understanding is no, no. I I understand what they're saying. Get on the shelf. No, no. I understand what they're saying. You can put on the shelf and then come back off. It don't work like that. You either stay live and you stay active until you make it, or else once you get put on the shelf, you on the shelf. You can't pull yep. that shit that oh boy <laughs> in uh, out in uh, Oakland pulled, where you can go be on TV for six or seven years and then go and just come straight back in as a head coach. A black exactly. coach can't do that. And get a hundred million dollar contract. A black coach can't do that. Herm Edwards did that. He didn't get. He didn't get a. He didn't get a big time position. We all he didn't know get that. a. Come on. He, yeah, he didn't get. State. He got Arizona State. But I'm just saying, Kevin Sumlin. <laughs> Kevin Arizona Sumlin. State. What I'm saying is, Kevin Sumlin is a guy that pro teams have considered. He's had pro team consideration. So again, I, again, I don't know. Again, I don't know what team. Exactly. I don't know what team might open exactly. up. That's not a coordinator. And maybe it is because he didn't go pro though. He didn't. He go, but he didn't go pro. But so it was too it late. There could have been a pro situation available because he didn't go pro. It was too late. They had already – all the pro coaches had been hired. Like Jimbo it, waited. There wasn't no head coaching position open for that man. Jimbo waited. There wasn't no head coaching position open for that dude. Even if there was, one, they wasn't going to put him in it. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. And so the thing about it is if, they, they if, got rid of – And that's the thing is like – So that's – Jimbo, who going to do the same thing Summerlin did? But here's the thing is yeah. like – but see, if, that, but see, that's all right, though. Yeah. I mean, I go, I don't mind. Again, he he took the job, and Arizona's probably a better, better. Maybe it was better than what may come open, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like he he probably could have sat out a year honest, and found. Tell me when the last time you thing of uh, that team in Texas before Sumlin was there? What? Tell me when he, he before someone was the head coach down there at Texas at uh, Texas A&M. Texas A&M. Uh, A&M. Yeah. Well, Texas A&M, A&M has always been one of those schools that have kind of, even when they were in the Big Twelve, they've kind of, they, even when they were in the Big Twelve, they kind of played around with mediocrity. Some years they'd be up, some years they'd be down. Went raised that team to another level. He got that team up to national prominence, and they got rid of it. Well, I don't, I don't know if that's he what, got. I don't know if Kevin that's Sumlin did, did or Johnny Manziel did. did, because, but because the Come glory on, of what he did was under Johnny Manziel. I agree. Now I'm not saying Manziel yeah, but, didn't help him. He didn't have that superstar. That helped him yeah, do but, it. But what I'm saying let is, let me tell you this: if you're gonna A&M if you're gonna ride now, if you're gonna ride a banner for Kevin Sumlin, you need to ride that same damn banner for 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 Mark Rick, or Rick you know, Rick, because it's the same results. Nah. It's the same results, man. If we're just talking about substance nah, of what they've done, a, they done, yeah. But here's the thing: Texas A&M ain't really like a program that that has been very impressive, regardless. I mean, you. You're not, Period, you're not yeah. looking at a program that that in Miami, even and Miami outside the that spurt in the '80s really and the spurt in the late like '90s, that. 2000s, the 2000s and the '80s, that 20, those few years, and then two decades in between. Like outside of that, Miami's been impressive. I mean, outside the the eight or ten you wins that, about, that, that, that Mark Rick know. wins at talking Georgia, talking has Georgia really been impressive? No, we're, we're talking about coaches that are quality head coaches in, 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 in college football. They get you eight, nine, ten wins a season, and that's what they're good for. They'll get you good pro talent. They're not winning national titles. Kevin Summers is not winning a national title. Yeah, but, but, see, but, this, but, see, on, but this is the difference. But this is the difference. Let me, help, let me say this, Obel. But this is the difference. If, if Mark Rick brings Miami back to prominence, he's not going to lose his job. It, it, if what he I'm telling you if he that consistently black, wins but listen, but listen, but listen, that listen, listen, division, listen he's saying, not going to lose his job. Saying. But listen to what I'm saying. They hire these black coaches as band aids. I agree. 
So you being hired to come in and do a reclamation project, and then once you yeah. get it back to where it's respectable and everything is going good, all of a sudden you're not good enough for the situation no more. We got to bring somebody else in now. See, that's so why. It looks like they're going to be doing that in Florida State, too. That's you know, why. Man, that's, that's what they hire you for. So that's why I didn't think Turner Gill should have left Buffalo. You you come in. Turner Gill should have stayed at Buffalo. He should have stayed in in. Uh, in, in, uh, I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. It, 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 it is what it is because it's, it's people's perception of what type of position you should be in. So that's that's the problem. Yeah. So because people's perception is that you shouldn't be in a a, a top level position, your your position is you got to try to bring the situation back to, to respectability, and then we put somebody else in there to get the benefits of that. Let Let me give you an example that may help you understand it better, Matt. Before no, I get it. Michael Vick, tell me what black quarterback you saw that got any attention. I mean, you had one with Ohio State that won. Warren, Warren yeah. Moon was yeah. an amazing. Are you black talking about college football or pro football? No attention. Because I, there's a lot None. in college football that got attention. But no, anyways. I'm just saying. It, the, the thing is, are you talking about no? These, just answer the. Are you talking about college or pro? You're, you're, I'm talking period. I'm talking. You can't do period. Notoriety. College or pro? Pick what one. College or pro? You, pick one. You didn't, you didn't, college or pro? Pick one. Pro, pro, pro. We're talking about college football, Tony. Why do you keep changing tub topics? Okay. To make a point, you don't change the topic. Come on now. Then, then Matt, let's let's go back to college football. Then you were talking about Texas A and M and their program, and then you were trying to compare it to Miami. No, you can't really do that. Miami, is Miami not, had highs. You, Miami, Miami had higher had, highs. Miami had higher no, highs. But Miami had sanctions. What sanctions and did sanctions. Texas A and M have? It, they didn't. I'm just saying they were mediocre. Miami went through a lot right, of times of down and mediocre. They just Texas had higher had always, highs. Was always mediocre. Yeah, always it's always been they mediocre. Like I agree. They are. Where, where always they've been. had like about 10, you know, 10 win seasons, maybe. But other than that, either they've been mediocre. See, it's the same. Are, and that's without sanctions. Because that's they the thing is. Compare that to Miami, because Miami has been, you know, pretty much a dominant program, whether they've been in the Big East in the 90s up to the 2000s, or, you know, pretty much now, whether they're trying to get to no, they, they No, in the, you just uh, stop ACC, at the Big East, James. You know James, just stop at the Big East. They, when they left the Big East, well, the dominance left too, and went a different direction. Is, they're, they're, they're making a point to you that uh, black in it, black NCAA coaches, yes, are not going to get the top. I programs. agree. Why? I agree. Because we're used to to build a structure. Yes. Once the structure has been built, then when you put on the outside to make it look pretty, I the agree. outside's got to look white. I agree. I don't dispute that. All I was saying is I think Kevin Sumlin might have been able to get a better job than Arizona if he took the booth for a year. We don't know what no, job is coming lie. open. But, you know, like I said, looking back at it, a lot of jobs came open and a lot of jobs were taken this season. You know, I don't know. Kevin Sumlin has been forgotten after a year. That's exactly. what we're trying exactly. to tell you. That's what we're trying to tell you. He don't get that. He think that, you know, that Kevin Sumlin's going to be in competition with some white coaches for a big time job and he's going to get the job. That's not how it, that's not no. How it. No, I don't Kevin necessarily. Sumlin no, I don't necessarily think he's going to be in competition for a big time job. <laughs> I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's going to be a big time <laughs> job, but. But I think what I'm saying is it could be better than the Arizona gig, but maybe not. And, and if he's such a, if he was a good, if he was held in such high regard, and I'm just thinking out loud now too, maybe it is better he took the Arizona gig. If he was and held in such high regard, I mean the the, um, I mean he he, he probably had some what of an opportunity to, to look at Oregon as an option too. So I. I Maybe that would have been a – that's kind of what he left, essentially. Athlete-wise, very – that's the thing. Is I don't know. I think it was probably maybe a little more comparable. But he got a gig in Arizona. He didn't have to move far. And, 
Yeah. But, you know, it's just like there, there was a time in the NCAA when you didn't see a black quarterback. That, that was a no-go. I don't care how great an athlete he was, how good an arm he had. He wasn't going to start on a, a, on a prime team unless he played for an HBCU. That's the only time a black man was going to start at quarterback. Oh, yeah. And not. that's because that was the next of the game. It's the same way with, with coaches. If you are going to get yourself known, you're going to have to get yourself known as a black coach on some smaller team, some build team. But once you get up to the big time, I'm talking about the ones that's getting 50 million people watching every weekend. They put a white man in there to see for them 50 million people to see. Yep. All right. See what happened to Lovey. Yeah. He couldn't sit down after he left the Bucks. He had to go right. He had to go right to Illinois. He was going to be out of it. If he would have sat down for two years and tried to get his hair together, he'd have yeah. been retired. Yeah. Done. But 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 he we're seeing retired. what happened with with Lovey there in Illinois. I think it's kind of coming out that Lovey isn't as good of a head coach as some people want to give him credit oh, yeah, for. Yeah, but hold up, but even. Maybe, but you're you're in Illinois, though. I mean, what, what kind of program is Illinois? Think about it. Exactly, Illinois basketball school. It's a Big Ten school, though. It's still, it's a Power Five yeah, conference school. school. Illinois, yeah, Illinois, they Illinois had a school. They, they're a basketball school. They're a basketball. School. Everybody know that Illinois basketball school. Okay, so I mean, you 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 got so teams is, in there. Well, so is Iowa, Iowa State. State. Or, Iowa State's or, or a basketball Iowa State's a basketball school too. But let you, you've, we've had a, there's been a couple of guys that came in there, and a, the last guy moved on. Uh, but the guy decided to stay now, and then went into football games. I mean, it, it, just because of schools. I mean, you had a guy at, at Duke. Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, the head coach at Duke. I mean, he stayed. I mean, a lot of people called his name after a year of doing well at Duke. That's a, it's clearly a yeah, basketball I mean, school. Yeah, you know, I'm just saying it's it's that, not. It's Cutliff? Yes, Cutliff. A lot, a lot of there was a lot of interest. There was interest in. There was interest in because he was a hot coach. People wanted to hire him more, and he's he stuck with it there. That he got an extension there at Duke. I mean, they haven't had that sort of success again, but still, nonetheless, I'm just saying it, it, it's not about is it a school? Is this? Is this? Is this? You put enough money behind it. I mean, I mean, Kentucky. Yesterday, just ran one of the top two teams in the MAC. Kentucky's not supposed to be playing football. It's competitive. Western Michigan should have won that game, and they didn't. That's one game. Kentucky's well, been building the team, same. though. Come on now. So Western Michigan's been there for for they a couple been seasons. Building the team, but they build a, they be Florida though. Oh no, that ain't happening. That's one. That's one game. Let's see what they do over the season. Kentucky, a basketball school. That's what they concentrate I, on. They I understand really what you're saying, but still, fo- football still pays Kentucky the bills Kentucky for basketball. Will probably tell you they are basketball school. <laughs> but but they you know are saying? building. That's a, not... They're building a football team. The last couple of years, Kentucky been trying to put one together. I, I hear you, but what I'm saying is, it doesn't. If it's a basketball school, whatever. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that it can't be competitive. It, and those schools aren't going to become national championships. Like pretty much, there's a small pool of twenty some teams that, in history, will really win a national title. And those teams will just keep yeah. winning national titles. You know, it's that. You know, it's that that. You know, like Bernie talks. One percent of the one percent of the one. It's the same thing in college football. The elite, the elite win in college mm-hmm. football the you same way. Twenty, I, I've not bet down to ten. I guarantee you, there ain't no. More I'm, than saying, 10 teams I'm saying, I'm saying in history. I think it's been 28 teams this in history that has won a national title. I think there's only 28 teams in the history of college football that's won a national title. I could be wrong. I think it's like 28. Without looking at it, it's like 28 yeah. teams that's ever it's won a national no more title. Than like 30. Is it? Well, I mean, you can. Any, I'm not far off. Win one That's all I'm the money. The, the problem is, does the school want to spend to win it? If you can find the money, you can win one. 
I'm saying USF can win a national championship if they if they get the money together. But that's the thing is you have to. It, that's the thing is college football. The environment changes so much every year. You couldn't just spend the money all one year to win a national title. It has to be over the no, course of like you know, six. And, and, yeah, I don't mean in one year, but I mean yeah. over the course of time. Because like I have to be over. People, if if those tech, yeah, if those tech people in Palo Alto decide they want Stanford to be a, a national power, it'll happen in three years. Oh yeah, put so much, oh, it, it'll happen in three years because they just put so much money behind it. it you won't have any choice. Right. They, they can get know, the least, biggest so recruiting they, budget in the world. At least they'd be able to, you know, compete or be in the national championship game because of working exactly. with, with uh, Phil Knight behind them, then Sanford can do yeah. it. Yeah. So they just I mean, get the shoot, biggest recruiting the budget in the country. Yeah, exactly. Shoot, they just get the biggest recruiting yeah. budget in the country. And if, if with that big recruiting budget, they will get players. Yep. So that's the thing is that you just have to have a team that's willing to spend, especially the way that the environment is now. The way the environment was in the 90s, it was really about, like, you know, could you coach football? It's now just can you spend money. Well, that's just like, look at how bad Texas has been for the last four or five years. They're the number one uh, college in the country. Yeah, that's like a kind of like an exception right there with Texas because Texas feels yeah. like the biggest budget in the country. Yeah, they are number one. They get they got the number one recruiting budget in NCAA. Yeah, they get they got they got the players, but you also got to have people that know what to do with it. Well, you got to have a combination of the two. But so you can, you can have the money, but but they don't have people. They haven't been able to put a good a good uh a good staff in there in a long time, even though they should have probably still right. Their strong, program though. sucks right now. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they should have yeah. Yeah. yeah, they should have stuck with strong though. Yeah, but they I think want to do that. The same. Yeah, they that was like that was like the same situation we were talking about from the beginning though, because it had um, you know, what's we call it, Mac Brown, kind of like <laughs> take that program to the ground, and they expected Charlie Strong to come in and clean it up, but they didn't even really give him that chance. Exactly, they didn't give him the time. He didn't even get that like, far. Yeah, he they didn't give him the time, but he could have did it if he would have got the time, and he would have had the budget because, like I said, with strong, strong can re- recruit Florida. So he in Texas, he can in Texas, and he can recruit Florida. He could have put together a serious program, and then he got the coaching understanding to, to put it all together. But they didn't want to let him yeah. build it. What he had, he had three yeah. years there. Was it three years? I think. Yeah, I think it was three years. Yeah, I think it was three. You know, and you know when you come in, you coming in with another person's staff. Yeah. That's why I'm, I'm curious to see what uh what Frost does in Nebraska because he's never recruited. Oh, he has. He, but you never saw the result of it. Yeah, he, he Oregon. That one, that one, that one, Oregon. Yeah. As a head coach? No, he was coordinator, but he did a lot of recruiting. Okay. Okay. Like I said, let me let let's let's see what kind of players he put on the field when when he got to run the whole situation. Yeah, because the, the people he won with at UCF wasn't necessarily his players that he brought in. Exactly. But that's the thing is, uh, at Nebraska is kind of the same situation, and, and it's already said as and, and I from from the turnover and stuff I saw there right from the get go. Some of the people are leaving. Some of the people. Uh, he kind of redirects some people out of the program, and every coach will do that just because it's not a fit for them, or you know, get, give the kid an opportunity to go somewhere else. If, if especially if you don't see it, you know, it really fitting, you know. Uh, some guys just feel yeah, a different yeah, but, way. I mean, when, let's see. Let's see if he he got the job because of what he did at UCF. No, so he, he got he got the job because he's Scott Frost and he's from Nebraska, and that's the last time they won a national title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean, I, I know that, but he he's a good coach. He's not a bad coach. No, he's a good coach. Right. Like, like let, let's see. Let's, let's put it this way: in Nebraska, he would have been he would have been the hire instead of Mike Riley had um had 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 the boosters been involved in somewhat of the decision he didn't even get an interview the first time around they didn't even enter he wasn't even considered for the job it was mike riley and that's why sean eichhorst was out too that was that was why they fired him first 
Well, I, I, I want to bring that, now that we back out into the Midwest, I want to bring back my uh, comment from earlier when I was saying that this whole thing is rigged as far as who goes to the national championship and who wins the national championship. If you look back in the 60s, 70s, and right before Miami took over in the 80s, Oklahoma and Nebraska was killing it. And you know why they were killing it? It's because the people who decided who played the national championship also decided it by who was in certain bowls back then. And they knew who, which conferences were going to go to those bowls, and they pretty much knew who was going to be in those bowls. So they pretty much knew that they narrowed it down to four or five different teams that were going to win the national championship all the time. And at that time, it was Nebraska and Oklahoma that was going to the Orange Bowls and going to the other bowls. And then you had USC out there in the Rose Bowl. It was all about the big name bowls. But that was Nebraska. The back then. But you have to understand. And the SEC didn't have big name bowls. They played in the Sugar Bowl. And it wasn't a big name. Bowl. That's why you didn't have a lot of SEC national championships back then. It's because they didn't play in one of them big bowls. It's all about the money. It's all about the but money. But you understand, back then, Nebraska was light years ahead of everybody with nutrition, uh, training, developing. You know, they weren't always getting high-end athletes. They were, they were getting kids from the Midwest. They get a few guys from Jersey here and there, a couple guys from California here and there. But as most guys from the Midwest, they just developed. They they had them eat better. They had them training but better. Like I said, they had know? that money to do that development. Yeah, they did have the money. And they to were do getting that. their money because they were always <laughs> game. They were getting those television uh, contracts. They were getting all of that big money because they were the winning. Wasn't getting it because they were that, winning. It's the same way. It's the same way now. Ohio State. Florida State, Miami, not Miami, but you know, the teams that are everybody knows are the ones getting all of the big money, so they're the ones that can go out and recruit. They're the ones that can spend that money to get the best athletes. And it was the same way back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. That's why the well, SEC wasn't so predominant back then, is because that the ship of gold was big bold. Well, now it's it's on the TV revenue, and nobody gets more TV revenue than the the Big Ten. Like the Big Ten gets more TV revenue than the ACC and SEC together. That's why the that's why that's why the Big Ten has a representative in the Final Four every single year, except for every last year. Every single year, except for there last is year. a member of the Big Ten in the Final Four, except for last year. That was a, you know, that was a fluke. Okay, so there's, so it's an exception because it's different than what you said. No, the, no, the thing is, you can set it up for them, but if they knock each other off, there's nothing you can do about that. It's set up I mean, they to could, make sure they get there. Listen, if they wanted to have Wisconsin in, they could have pushed Wisconsin in or Penn State or. Nah, nah. If they really wanted that was to. Nah, 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 nah. No, no. You know, it. It, 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 one it. Of, they expected Ohio State to beat Wisconsin. They expected uh, Penn State. You know, they had expectations as far as odds. And then when those odds got beat, it threw everything off because they didn't expect Wisconsin to beat Ohio State. They didn't expect, they didn't expect Ohio State, State to lose to Iowa. Exactly. Things happened that they didn't expect to happen so that it ended up where the Big Ten did not have a representative. But that's because things happened that were beyond their control. The actual games happened, and they lost the game, and that was beyond their control. They couldn't control that. Mm. 
You know, we but need to. As a, far as the you know way what? Got it structured, Tony, what I need to do. In structure, when the you. Team, the SEC and the ACC are going to be there every year. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Let's see if I can find it. I may have it. Let's see here. Nope, I don't have it. James, we need to put X file. We need to put the theme song to X file. So this way, when Tony goes on his conspiracy rants, we can go ahead and play that. Play that X files. Somebody should be on there, man. Put that X Files music on. Truth. Just saying. You, you know, Just my saying. conspiracy theories, but I'm telling you, it's there. If you look at it closely, it's there. Like, for example, Wait. back in the <laughs> 70s and 80s, name the big bowl game the Orange Bowl, the Rose <laughs> Miami. Bowl. What was it for the big bowl back then? Why are we talking about the 60s, 70s, and 80s? We have we have then, we have actual football playing now. See right. how many of the winners of the Orange Bowl, Rose Bowl, and Cotton Bowl won the national championship, and then you'll see only certain teams can even go to the Rose Bowl, Cotton Bowl, and Orange Bowl. So yeah, and only certain teams can go to the 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 playoff. You, if you're not a Power Five school, you're not going to the playoff. We saw that last year with UCF. But that, what I'm saying is they knew how they were narrowing it down, so they knew who was going to be representing the national championship every year. I mean, it's called a prediction. I mean, we, they do that every year. But, yeah, no, they're, they're, like, I, like I said, the elite programs are, are basically the programs that are going to be competing for it in and out every year. That being said, I want to go ahead and look ahead so we only got uh, 15 minutes or so left in the show. I want to look ahead to week two of the college football season. Uh, some marquee games next week, this, or this coming Saturday, rather, that uh, to keep an eye on. Um. Obviously, UCLA didn't have such a good week the first week, and they had to they head to Norman. Can we expect a, another blowout here for Oklahoma? Yep. 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 That's a blowout. Yeah, they're gonna get ran. Hey, that that yeah, that dude uh, was it Kyler Murray? Yeah, he's yeah. gonna be a player, man. He's gonna be a player this season. Yeah, he. I think he looks better than Baker Mayfield. Uh, maybe it might be just. Probably I mean, he's does. he's had a couple years in the system, too. So he know he knows Lincoln Riley's system, and you know Lincoln recruited him. So I, I think I agree with you. There's going to be another blowout. Uh, another game is it should be a good game though. Uh, Georgia South Carolina, in South Carolina. So uh, mm, I'm not I, according to Tony. No, that's going to be a blowout soon. Yeah, it's going to be a blowout. And then we got uh, Colorado heading into Lincoln. So, big eight, big 12 rivalry there. Nebraska's uh, really first game of the season. I think Nebraska gets them. I think Nebraska gets them. Nebraska's at home, right? Yeah. In 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 that yeah, in Scott Frost's actual first game. And yeah, then Nebraska uh, gets them in that game. It's a home game. And then Nebraska's we got, pretty good at home. You got to be careful. It used to be. I don't know. Again, I don't know what what again what we're gonna get with Scott Frost. Uh, again, it's it's a new system. It's it's not. Not his guys, so again, I don't know. I don't know what what it's gonna look like. Like I said, I don't think it's. I, I think that everybody says six wins, but I think they could get eight. I don't think eight wins is unforeseeable for Nebraska, 
It's a tough schedule, but I think that they can upset at least one team and win seven others are supposed to. Uh, I don't think they compete for the East or the West, rather. They don't compete for the West, really, because uh, I don't think they beat Wisconsin. Because you have to beat oh, Wisconsin. I forgot about something. You just reminded me about something. Yeah. Uh, in reference to uh, the Big Ten West, man. Um, new coach, uh, Minnesota, mm-hmm. man. It's his second year. Oh, his second year? Yeah. I thought it was his first year. No, it's his second year. But yeah, I think it, yeah. He, him and his damn oars. But, um, he's going canoeing. I, I think, hey, you got, I, I, you know what? I say watch out for them, man. They they have, you talk about a favorable oh, no, they, schedule. They have a favorable schedule. Yeah. Them, they do. They do. And Iowa always does they, too because they, they, they always kind of schedule some. Yeah. But they, Iowa plays Iowa State this weekend, so that's that should be a relatively Actually, decent they, game. I could, they really have one. a chance to be, uh, um, what is it, 10 and 2? Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they could be 10 and 2, man. I think Iowa State wins that Iowa game. Hawkeyes suck. No, they don't. They could probably- <laughs> You're one of the best quarterbacks in the country. That don't mean the rest of the team don't suck. And Their it, defense sucks. <laughs> Their defense don't suck. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Have you watched the I big – you, you don't watch any so games outside the, the SEC, ACC. Closed. If it's not in the South, you don't even know where it's at. Kid out. Look, Come on. Is going to bust out. Why are you trying to fake the funk, Wally? Wow. All right. <laughs> Come on, I'm taking it back for you. You know what that means, right? All right, well, just just know I'm on the record. Iowa State gonna beat Iowa. All right. Since I don't know what I'm talking about, you got me on the record. I'm a, I, yep. I'm on video. 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 You're on video. Yeah, that's what it is. I joke. On something. Yeah. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> yeah, you hear it. I stayed over Iowa. Uh, uh, that's upset alert. <laughs> I don't know if it's upset alert. Remember what Iowa State was doing last year? They, they did were good. I'm telling you, no kind of them, boys last was, year. Them, them boys was throwing that ball. Like, it's, it's fun. So, so. And I'm telling you, I, defense can't, can't stop all this, that, that Eric Coriel shit going on in Iowa State, boy. <laughs> See, Iowa, yeah. Iowa has a little bit so. tougher schedule this year. They got to go to Minnesota. They gotta go to Penn State. They That's gotta go to Purdue. That's a loss. But they have Nebraska at Ooh. home, oh, Northwestern at home, um, and they have Wisconsin at home. But outside of Wis- and they gonna lose two of those. Outside of Wisconsin, Penn State, Purdue, Nebraska, like. I mean, they, they've basically they've skipped out on everybody on the other side of the conference outside of Penn State. You know, they, they got Maryland. You know, Wisconsin's on their side, so they have to play. But it's the day, it's the OA when guns are done. It don't matter. You know, you can sit in so good season, but in today's CAA, two games you're done. Two games, yeah, you're yeah. done, pretty much. Two games, you're pretty much done. See, I yeah, don't know. That's, that's the thing. It's like, you know, that's that's always been kind of the argument. Should should a team that loses two games? Because here's a, my my issue is there's there's no centralized body that is governing how they schedule these uh, these games. The the Pac-12, the Big Twelve, and the Big Ten all have nine conference games. Per year, my the ACC and SEC still do eight. The, the big, the Big Twelve, or no, the Big 
the Big Ten and the Pac-12 have they only they they don't schedule FBS schools, only FCS schools. You know, so that that's that's mandatory. They can only they can only schedule FCS schools, and uh, the Big Twelve wants its teams to schedule one Power Five out of conference every year, and uh, Iowa gets around that because they have Iowa State every year as a rivalry game. Right, and I guarantee you, I hope we're gonna lose the games this year. Man, I'd like to see. I, I wish, because I don't think there's Nebraska Iowa, Nebraska Iowa. That's not a rivalry game. No, no one. We, we never looked no, at the Hawkeyes like. We never looked at the. No, that's the thing. Is like what I thought. See, I think I thought it'd be better for Nebraska to have try to have like Oklahoma every year. Like schedule that. Like Iowa State, Iowa. OU? Yeah, OU. And just like the only thing that makes people even watch Iowa is because they look like the Steelers. They got Steeler colors. Other than that, they suck. Well, if they got if they got Steeler colors then uh, Iowa State got USC colors. Yep. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That, that's the only thing that even draws attention to Iowa. Is they got Pittsburgh Steeler colors? <laughs> Other than that, you wouldn't even pay for a football team. Maryland puts a flag on yeah. every team, don't they? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. Does. If I had a flag that looked like that, I'd probably put on everything too. I mean, they got. Probably the coolest state I, flag. I wonder what is that flag? What what's up with that flag? What is why? What is it stand for? I don't know. Maryland. Man, I don't, really I don't really know. know, man. I don't, I don't know. know. That's that's way off topic, though, Wally. Oh my fault. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna digress to you civil know, war I, next. I, I tend to stray. <laughs> 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 Did you know the Confederacy? No, man, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> I did not know. You know, I, I get political at times. I can't help it. It's it's in my blood. Yep. Oh. <laughs> uh. Trying to scroll through these. These other games. Who gonna win the national championship this year? That's what we can end on. Probably Just Alabama. Start of the year. First game picked out. Who gonna win? It? Probably Alabama. Everybody give a prediction. Probably Alabama. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I just see it, man. It's too. Uh, their schedule doesn't really have too many many challenges in it to like keep them out of the playoff yet again. So. I'll say they, they'll get it because they they got it like to me they got it really easy before they even like play LSU and I don't think LSU is like at that at that point so to where they get challenge Alabama this year so Alabama will be back in the playoffs and they'll they'll get it again uh, I think they'll they'll be back in the playoffs and I think Clemson will be back in the playoffs again watch don't be surprised if they face each other yet again. Four straight years. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I got Alabama going back, Clemson going back. I don't know who the other two teams are going to be, but I know it's going to be those two two teams just because of the schedule. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I don't think right. um, I don't think they're going to get two SEC teams in this year like they did last year because I think Alabama will win the they'll win the SEC West and then they're going to beat Georgia the SEC championship. Yeah, see that's a, the I only. Think, but I, I think. I if, think the, if, if Georgia runs the table and just loses the championship, I think that still put them in. They might. Mm. They might. Because it, like the only way the only way maybe only only maybe is uh, Georgia Georgia would have to it have to have another loss outside the, the nah. SEC. I mean they, if they got two losses, they're not like getting who, in. Well, nah, they ain't gonna 
they ain't gonna lose no uh, Georgia Tech, and they already got like the only other out of conference teams they got is uh, Middle Middle Tennessee and then UMass and, and Georgia Tech. That's it. Yeah, and yeah. Alabama outside of LSU and Auburn, they don't have but, anybody on the schedule that that's threatening. But at all. Georgia does play LSU or Auburn from the West this year. They go to Death Valley and they have Auburn at home. Yeah. So I don't know so, the LSU game may be something, but we'll we'll see. They finally got a quarterback. I oh, man, I, I, I don't know about that, man. I mean, I when it comes to SEC I standards, know. I don't know. When it comes to SEC standards, you don't think they got a quarterback? Come on now. <laughs> SEC don't have quarterbacks like that. He's he is good for <laughs> SEC. He's good. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I I agree with y'all though. Alabama is hard to beat because they got Auburn at Alabama this year. That was the game that I was thinking. I was thinking Auburn could beat Alabama this year. But when they playing them in Tuscaloosa, I, I don't think they can beat them. That was the only chance Alabama had of not making it this year. And because they playing uh, Auburn in Alabama, I agree. Alabama going to win the West again. And, you know, like, I, like y'all said, Alabama's system is just it's head it's it's head and above everybody else. I just don't and I don't see you beating Alabama once they get into a a, a playoff system. And Georgia yeah. and Georgia's bad. basically I mean, in. Uh, the thing is, they, they, they're they're the sitting at the. Has to drop off in order for anybody to have a chance to get I mean, they sit at the same stoplight. Really, looking at the same scenery because. The only the only two threats really to Georgia are LSU and Auburn as well. I mean they're not going to lose to Florida. No, they're not. Uh, I mean, who else? I mean they don't you, they don't s- schedule nobody on out of conference. Out of here. Middle Boom. Tennessee State. Beat Georgia this year. They got Matt UMass second to last Florida game Georgia before Georgia Tech. You don't believe that. Ooh, I, I think Florida beat Georgia, that, Georgia so this year. I think I Frank, his, now that he don't got a year up under his belt, I think Franks is going to be great at Florida this year. And I I think in in uh, neutral field, Florida beat Georgia. <laughs> Hey, I'm telling you. I, I'm telling you. You say what you want. I know what you want. I'm on the record. I'm on the record. Iowa State beats Iowa. The beach Georgia. All right. <sighs> now, I didn't say what Florida's overall season was going to be. But I think they beat Georgia. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Nobody. You know what's scary, though, is after Tennessee's ass whooping they just took this weekend, I'm I'm scared Florida might lose to Tennessee in Tennessee this year. Why? Tennessee. They They better not. They play Florida tough at home. Tennessee plays Florida tough at home. Y'all better worry about losing to Colorado State. That's what y'all need to worry about. Colorado State might sneak up and get you. So my question is, I'm playing. uh, But here, how much are they gonna suck on Notre Dame's penis this year? But. uh, but but real talk that uh, Florida has at least five losses this season. Get the fuck out! What? <laughs> what? Oh man! <laughs> no, you did five. Not. See, that's a you great way to close the show, there, buddy. <laughs> you you want to say something to try me? I, I cannot believe you let that come out your mouth. What? Oh, it's five. 
They got five. Get the, get, it just, wow. Look, LSU. Five losses. Georgia. There's Not two, gonna gar- happen. There's two you, guaranteed losses. Two guaranteed losses. They played swamp. With Willie. Willie's going to figure it out by the last game of the year. Y'all do oh, something wow. to, y'all do something to so shoot you yourself in the foot. <laughs> yeah, y'all going to do something to shoot yourself in the foot against Mississippi State. At Mississippi State. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and y'all might even lose in the swamp to South Carolina. But y'all, oh, my goodness. But y'all beat you Tennessee at Tennessee. I'm just saying. Y'all better watch out for Kentucky. You see, Show me y'all could be Kentucky first. I mean, we're over here talking about we're over here, we're over here talking about Mississippi State. Show me you could be Kentucky, Kentucky. Come on, man. Dan Mullen is gonna let Mississippi State. Y'all beat Kentucky by one point last year. You beat Kentucky by one point last year. You did. It was twenty eight twenty seven. Oh my god. It came down to the last possession of the game against Vandy. And you almost lost to Vandy. Vanderbilt. This is a whole different year with a whole different... You lost in the swamp to Tennessee. A team that fired their coach and then couldn't find a coach for like a year, it seemed like. You probably would have lost to Northern Colorado had they not canceled the game. You got lucky. You can ask. You can oh, thank wow. Irma. We did nah, not lose to Tennessee one. last year in the swamp. No, you you did beat him by six, but barely. Is it, yes, we, we we did win. But Missouri did run you out of town, and so did Georgia. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nah, that that. And like Florida. Said, and Florida State. That, Florida State, last year's Florida State. I'm pretty sure they, they were on like their fifth string quarterback. We didn't have a quarterback. And they didn't even have a good this year. Like, I'm literally talking about Florida State. They said that like everybody knew Jimbo was gone. Like, y'all were a game. You were the game so they could play a damn bowl game. They needed y'all to go ahead and take that L so they could play in a bowl game. You know? that That was. I'm surprised UAB you didn't see, beat you. I'm surprised. I'm surprised UAB. I'm surprised UAB didn't beat you. I'm surprised. Why you be sleeping on the Blazers? Sleeping on the Blazers. Five games. Five games. Wow, man. I say two games. We might lose two games this year. Might. You will Come second in the guarantee you in lose at least two games. It's guaranteed. Come second, g- come second to Georgia in the SEC, and I don't think it's because we lose to Georgia. I think it's because we lose to Tennessee. I think Tennessee might beat us in Tennessee, and then Georgia beats Tennessee, and that's why they win the SEC. But we're going to beat Georgia. I think Missouri finishes ahead of you. Uh, no. Yeah. Because Missouri's got to come to the swamp this year. Cause it don't matter. We took an ass whooping in Missouri last year. Yep. Ain't going to be again. Missouri's got to come to the swamp this year. It don't matter. Year, so they going dang. The swamp don't matter you, anymore. You, you got to understand. Y'all didn't no, even sell out. Y'all didn't even it sell out your matter. opening game for your new coach. Y'all were struggling and selling tickets. Gator, the swamp has lost confidence. The swamp is being drained. Get out. To use a political Get reference. Out. Get out. The swamp is being drained. Get out. Get <laughs> the out. Florida wetlands are in danger. <laughs> I'm calling 10 and 2 this Listen, year. the only swamp that's left is just before you get to Gainesville. They got that marsh area, and that's it. That That's the swamp. Oh, wow. That football stadium area, is I, I, not, it don't have the same effect. I'm sorry. 
Y'all need I'm to get. You need year. to build that going, back up. I think we got you know, see, y'all, y'all were like, you're like, I would say you're like little Mario, but you're like Toadstool, like little Toadstool and Mario too. You gotta work your way back to getting to be Mario, right? You, oh, you're wow. Toadstool, right? You gotta build so it. You gotta get you a mushroom young. so you can build up before you get, you know, a leaf. To become the raccoon, that you know, I mean, just saying, just I don't know, yeah. you certainly don't have the star yeah, you know, that you thought you had. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I should just got to bring it up. Super Mario Three. <laughs> I know. Dun, 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 dun. He, he he told us we could be Luigi. Damn. Nope. You're toast, dude. And you, and you surely aren't. You surely aren't princess from Mario Two. Mario Two princess is the best in Mario Two. I tell you, we used to have to say you can't use the princess because she could fly. She is gliding her ass like you would skip a whole damn level. She just glide the whole damn level. It like wasn't even fair. I mean, dang. <laughs> Nah, man, Florida, Florida, Florida will be a little bit better this year, man. I, a little I, bit. More That's not a up, stretch. Man. That's not a stretch. They will be a little bit better. They will. Florida lost four games last year. A little bit better would be two games. I mean, they're going to look a little bit better than they did last year. I mean, but I, I think uh, if they have five, I'm just saying, if they have five losses, I'm not surprised. And Gators, Gator fans shouldn't be upset. When y'all wow. take an L, when y'all take an L to Mississippi State at Mississippi State, LSU at home, Georgia at home, FSU in Tallahassee. Those are, I say, four losses. Four losses. Yeah, four losses. No, you got y'all probably have four losses this year, maybe five. Not gonna happen. I'm saying we had four last year, and a coach Mississippi that had State. Up to the, you're on the uh, road. Championship game two in a row, and he got fired. Y'all lose Why? to Mississippi State blew, on the road. Lose. You lose to LSU at home, and you lose to Georgia at home. Those, I'm saying, those are three losses. And you're probably going. you probably going to take the Not L in Tallahassee. Happen. So I'm saying those are the four losses. I'm calling. You can go ahead. We 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 and we can go ahead and and, and no. sound it off. You know, break, it won't let me play it. But no. We can go ahead. We can go ahead and just rack those up as as a loss. And I say in, in reverse order: Florida two. State, Georgia, LSU, Mississippi State. We got a beautiful, like I said, Florida has a great schedule this year. If you look at our schedule, we have a great schedule because all our tough games are in the swamp. The only game that ain't in we the swamp. We have a great schedule. Is Georgia, it's the best schedule. Oh, I've never seen a more pristine schedule than I've ever seen this schedule before. It's the best schedule ever. We schedule the best teams on the best schedule. We love it. It's a great schedule. And. We're gonna go team We're gonna win. Here. We're gonna be doing so much winning. You're gonna get tired of it. You're tired of Gator winning. winning. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. <laughs> winning. So much winning. Gator fans will just be tired of winning. So much, so, much. so much winning. Never get tired of winning in the swamp. Never get tired. Man, he see. This is why James. This is why I said when he first came on, he's like, "I don't know about Florida. I don't know about them this year." I was like, "I don't believe a word you just said." And here he goes, just proving proving my point. Like it only took an hour and a half to get there, but he did. No, I still, I still don't have any. He sound he sound inquisitive. James, am I lying? Wally sound inquisitical as hell about about Florida. Like he's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. We might not win games. Like that's what it said. It literally sounded like that at the beginning. And I said, you you're gonna get five losses. What? No, we maybe maybe no, we'll lose two. No. 
We're going to be in the running for the national title. We be, I even say we beat Georgia, but we lose to Tennessee. Like he said, what's the most unlikely thing to happen? We'll lose to Tennessee. That is still a garbage fire, but we beat Georgia. So it kind of balances out in a weird way. Is he, is he, is he hedging his bet? He's hedging his bet. We can get up for the Georgia game. We can call I that. I think we gonna get up for the. the game. I think Tennessee can get up for that game. I think Tennessee gonna be up for the Tennessee game, and we gonna be up for the Georgia game. I I think I think Watley has tarot cards, and I think he's just flipping over some tarot cards, and he's he's thinking that that's why he's saying what's gonna happen. Wow, that's funny. Not really. It's tarot. It's his tarot cards. (laughs) Damn. Wow. He called he called in on an unknown number. Like all suspicious, like starting to talk about conspiracy theories. No, this is this is my new Tennessee number, so you need to save this. Right. I'll save it. See, I, I finally I finally got rid of my eight one three number. It took me forever. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wouldn't let me turn it in. <laughs> I went and said, "Hey, I want a Tennessee number." And they're like, "Are you sure?" <laughs> <laughs> 